Warning! The Stone Age Gamer Podcast includes a lot of bad language. Cover your motherfucking ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I'm Chris Randasso and joining me tonight is Out of Context Clip Show, Dan Ryan. Oh man, sometimes I have teeth, sometimes I don't. That's... I, this, and, oh, God. and Banana Slamma, Dean DeFalco. <laughs> Firstly, thank you for using that for, for my intro, because uh, I had that written down in my notes, just banana slamma. Uh, also, I am very upset that you don't think I might need to shit myself and need to go to the bathroom like the other two of you. I have that ability. I have it. Welcome to Stone Age Gamer, where we might need to uncontrollably shit. Bear with us. One or all of us. All aboard the SAG Cartoon Express. This time we were talking about shit, and I mean that. We're talking about an episode That's, of the hideous, yeah, boy. the hideous Donkey Kong Country cartoon. How did science manage to create so many hideous faces? Be on the lookout for King K. Rule's tale, because the Stone Age Gamer <laughs> podcast starts now. Hi, oh, I'm everyone. so happy this I don't episode. read the script. Oh, yes. Well, I, <laughs> I like being know, surprised by your quips. I'm I'm glad that you stopped because it makes it a lot more fun. Uh, hi everyone. This episode 531 is the week of September 6. Wait, no, that's today. So, it's the week of September 13th, 2024 and welcome. For anyone new here, this is the official podcast of stoneagegamer.com. Dan and I talk every week about what's happening in the world of video games and sometimes we're joined by Dean like tonight. Uh and we do it from a retro gamer's perspective as well as whatever the heck is going on in our lives. Speaking of which, how you doing? Uh, Either who wants you. to go first? Whichever you... You know what? I, I'll go first this time. I haven't right, gone yeah, first go in a little Good. while. I gotta, I'll gotta. just get a little of my bullshit out of the way. Yeah, man. Um, uh, I'm exhausted because it's been a, a shit couple of days. Uh, the kids are back in school, thank God. Uh, it's, it's given me a little little space. But uh, I don't... I, you may have heard, if you've been paying attention to the news, um, that... Atlantic City Electric is under investigation. Uh, yes, by 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 many things uh, from lots of people uh, who have wound up with just astronomical bills. Well, guess who got one of those astronomical bills the other day? Dan, <laughs> it was me. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's so fun. So, if you remember, it was—I don't even think it was a full year ago when they uh, emptied out my bank account and took yeah. like a month and a half to give me my money back. Um, so I get a notice in the mail that says, we've been trying to reach you about your bill. Uh, it, you owe us a whole lot of money. And if you don't pay it within like a week, we're going to shut off your power. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've been trying to reach me because the fuck you have. <laughs> I've never gotten an email, a phone call, and this is my first letter. So let's see what's going on here. I think I'm up to date with my electric bill to do, do, do go to the, go to uh, the, uh, the website and. Lo and behold, my usual electric bill is somewhere around like, like a little under two hundred ish dollars. Around summertime, That's not like bad. last last August, with you know with, during the heat waves and stuff of last summer, it got up to like around two hundred and thirty ish dollars on the heavy months. Like, okay, understandable. We're blasting the AC all the time because we got to you know, survive, uh, and sure. that's just the way things go. So, like, we're looking at two hundred, two hundred and thirty ish. There's a little warning on the website. There's been a 5% increase, uh, and inflation is a thing. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't explain a $640 bill for the month. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, no. Wow. <laughs> Not at all. No. No, that really doesn't. And uh, We just went so ahead and was, tripled it. That was the That's August how fives one. work, right? And now I'm like over... Now, that was the August one, which I actually didn't pay because August was such a mindfuck the whole month just completely slipped away from me god i hated august august was terrible and now the september bill is added on to it and it's over a thousand so the the september bill is over a thousand or a thousand combined it's combined yeah now we're now we're up okay. to over a thousand and uh so i tried getting I, I really don't want to harp on this i'll just say that i tried on custom getting on customer service for somebody to explain it to me they said a bunch of nonsense to me that didn't make any sense. None of the math made, like, none of the math mathed. And then they said, well, you just got to... <laughs> it was Steiner you, you math. Gotta, 
call the uh, <laughs> the the what's it the 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 state uh, help programs right? There's a like two what I think it's two yeah. and one or whatever that uh, call them up and ask them if they can help uh, alleviate your bill. But if you don't pay by this time, we're shutting off your power. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Not so, even a little bit admitting that they might have fucked up. Oh God, no! And I cannot. I mean, I imagine they have to like not be. The, everyone's probably very thoroughly trained to make explaining this as difficult as possible. Oh yeah, uh, so that nobody can understand it, and also to not admit any fault because it's pretty public how much scrutiny they're under right now. I mean, yeah. I despise Jeff Van Drew, and he's sure. even looking into this shit. <laughs> Granted, it's probably a <laughs> hollow attempt at getting votes because he's a chill. <laughs> this is the guy oh, who sure. ran for ran as a Democrat and then flip flopped to be a Trump like ring kisser. Yeah. So like, he's yeah. about as useless as a ah, whatever. So I it's on put a, up on a mule. There you go. Is that the same? I think so. Why buy the cow when you get the sex for free? You're gonna ruin uh, our reputation <laughs> with all the Trump supporters, Chris. <laughs> I believe that ship has sailed. <laughs> I, I believe. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't think. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I, but I don't think we've hidden hidden it very well. <laughs> Regardless, um, I put up a bunch of my games for sale uh, because I I need money because I need electricity. And even if something comes of all these investigations into Atlantic City Electric, nothing's going to happen before. They shut off my power, and no, there's sure. Only, there's like, there's only so much I can do. So it's like, all right, I'm just gonna try and sell off a handful of things. And one of our wonderful listeners, uh, Mister Mister, uh, I'll, uh, I don't know if he wants me to say this. It's Matt Flamger, of course he does. He did. He's been mentioned on the show before. Big old he MF! Bought, yeah. He bought my uh, my copy of uh, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness uh, to to help me out, and I greatly appreciate That's awesome. it. Uh, he also sent me his uh, from Kickstarter. He kickstarted Sea of Stars and the Super Ultimate Fancy Edition, which came with the final yeah. soundtrack. And Ooh, he I doesn't have that. a record player, so he sent it to me. And it's beautiful. That's awesome. I listened, Sexy. To, the, I listened to the first yeah. record while making pizza tonight. It's wondrous. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Matt. You're a, a marvelous human being. Uh, he said that he found out we about really the whole... We really have the fucking best listeners in the world. Right? Like, we th- seriously Full do. stop. Like, we really so fucking nice. do. They're, they're just a bunch so of sweeties people he said that he missed out on giving money to the, the to the dan fund uh he just like completely missed it because he didn't check his email uh yeah and it just got funded too fast because people just love you too goddamn much i, uh, I know but he, that's awesome. he said he was happy to be able to help me out uh and uh, I yeah no that's fantastic i appreciate it it's it it goes a long way and in paying this exorbitant bill that, I mean, you know, if something That's winds up absurd. happening and they, they have to, like, reimburse people, like, that'll be a lovely bonus in the future. But I'm not going to rely on anything like that. I'm not no. going to rely on it being anything other than a slap on the rich to slap on the wrist to some rich guy and, no, and slap, some sort of apology. Slap the shit out the rich. <laughs> slap slap <laughs> the rich. A slap to the rich. Just a slap to the rich. <laughs> I Big love it. backhand. Mm. Oh, that sucks, man. That is, yeah. does. yeah. But you know that, what? That else fucking sucks because there's nothing the, else you can do. Yeah, like it, it, like you said, I have to have electricity. I hope yeah. you get a bank error in your favor, but the good kind, not the kind that happened with <laughs> Chase, where people were just fucking themselves over hard. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Let's let's try to hack ATMs based on something <laughs> we saw on TikTok. That's gonna that's gonna pan out great. There's no way. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Idiots. Yeah, <laughs> fucking idiots. Uh, Tide pods all over again. Yeah, it's oh, the world we boy. live in. Anything yes. else? In this man's economy. Got? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, yeah, I just just a bunch of other stuff. Uh, the uh, uh, what's it? The um, uh, the basketball hoop situation kind of sort of yeah. Uh, the result i finally got the smaller one i built it in like half the time it's okay it is considerably more lame uh mm. than, the, than the big one uh but it is still fun sure. the kids are enjoying it so at least it fits know. right yeah it fits it's here yeah. uh it it makes fun noises ally thinks it's great and uh well it is, it is what it is it, it's here and it's neat i'm glad the the saga is over uh, and I just, I think that's kind of most of it. Uh, the, the Ellie's pick for the movie night was the emoji movie this evening. 
plot synopsis That's hit awful. me. Hit me. What happened? Um, there's a the meh emoji. Yeah, can make other faces. Okay, so they think he's defective, and there's mm. a girl emoji who's the princess. And she's a hacker emoji, and they're gonna like recode him to be an actual meh emoji. And he teaches her to dance, and they fall in love. And uh, it's it is like holy shit, it's, that's like someone's like coloring book story. It is like <laughs> the most by the numbers movie product I've ever seen. It is just. This is generic movie. Enjoy. Uh, uh, there was some. There, there was the one piece of genius casting, and I can't believe they dragged this poor man into it. Uh, so the Met emoji's dad, <laughs> the previous Met emoji, was played by Stephen Wright. If there is a human is personification, wow. there's a human yeah. personification of the term Met. It's Stephen Wright. It was it was it was genius. It was a shame he didn't have anything worthwhile to say because this movie was just because emojis. <laughs> this movie was uh, the the humor was really 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 shallow, and it was just it was in, it was vapid. The whole thing was vapid. Um, but it was uh, it was Citizen Kane compared to Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. You know, I was going to say that's too high praise. It's really not. It's really fucking not. <laughs> it's not. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, and, yeah, very, very little in the way of games this week. I played a little bit more. I, I played a decent amount more Yars, actually. Um, it's, How's it going? It's going It's going great. I can't believe I'm how much fun I'm having. I'm, I'm having a hard time putting it down when I'm playing it. Like, it's I just, refreshing to hear. I want to know what's what's going to happen next. The The... The flow of the game is really quite good with the constantly stopping to play Yar's Revenge. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm throwing out a spoiler alert here because it is like a, some, a piece of the story. I just got to a part that ties it into Yar's Revenge. No shit. Like, okay. I got to this basement area where there were Yars, like the fly aliens. And apparently. That's why she goes by the nickname Yar and has this little tattoo thingy on her wrist was because one of those Yars crash landed on Earth when she was a kid. And she thought she imagined the whole thing because she was a little kid and the Yar like hung out with her and gave her the little the little tattoo thing. And uh, then I don't remember what actually happened to it, but she just discovered it. And when we discovered all the Yars in the basement, it's like. The quotile is what it was performing some sort of operation on one of them, and she was like, "Oh shit, I remember all this stuff now. What the hell?" And uh, obviously, the writing is still "Hello, you know, hello, fellow children," but it's <laughs> interesting enough, and the gameplay loop is pretty satisfying. I still haven't gotten the update though. Right? Remember, I said last hmm, week they said yeah. that there was an update yeah. coming this yeah. week. I haven't seen anything, so I, this I, week's not over. Yeah, I suppose this week's not over. Uh, but the it's game's supposed to come out on... I think it's supposed to come out on Tuesday, so... Uh, I, I hope they get it out before the game actually launches, because uh, you know there are still a couple of technical hitches here and there, but it's... It's not a masterpiece, but it is weirdly engrossing. Like, the gameplay loop is very satisfying, and the way that the Yars Revenge keeps changing, like, um, in that interview we talked about last week... They mentioned WarioWare, and I didn't quite get it, but now I do, because they keep mm -hmm. changing aspects of Yar's Revenge to make it more interesting. Like, I, I did notice that, that like there's somewhat different objectives uh, when you're in the game. It's not always just, like, Yar's Revenge. Yeah, like, I got to one the, the other day that was just Centipede. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I, know, I, yard, I, I played cool. that. Yeah, oh, and now I, I'm playing Centipede. Now I'm... Now I'm shooting like a whole bunch of ones, the like little alien things that are all around me. The quotiles moving around the stage, like it keeps switching it, it up, really almost cool. like taking that like Atari Twenty Six Hundred like different game modes thing yes. to the next level. I, I there's a lot of love put into this game, and I really hope that it all comes together. I'm still don't like the writing, but is what it is. Uh, I started playing the Meo, the Smiling Man demo. Which, okay, mm -hmm. can you explain to me what that is? Because I've seen nothing besides the cover for it, which just looks off-putting. 
Uh, it is off-putting. That's okay. the point. It's okay. a it's a murder mystery. Yeah, it's kind supposed of thing. to be. You're a detective. Uh, I keep reading uh, not a lot of th- people who have finished it, but anyone that I've seen like online that has finished it has been like, I can't believe no one's talking about how Nintendo released this game that is so deeply fucked up, um, and in a good way. Like mm. it's it's yeah. it seems to be very well liked. Uh, it's, I'm right in the beginning, so I'm still, like, just kind of clicking text boxes and, you know, asking questions and kind of getting the lay of the land, but, uh, all I've done so far is, uh, it's, it's, it's very, it's like Phoenix Wright, basically, but Mm, with no humor. It's very, like, uh, you are an assistant to, uh, a detective and... You go to a crime scene, and the crime, uh, the there was a some sort of kid was murdered, and when you go to see the body, the body has you know a, a paper bag with a creepy smiley face drawn on it, and then we went back to the office and we're trying to figure out what the next thing to do is, and that's when I stopped playing the demo because I just mm. ran out of time. Right, it's been a it's been a difficult week, but I'm curious to keep going with it. It's um. Just because I keep hearing the story is outstanding, and it's I don't really play digital novels like this all that much. I really enjoyed uh, the first Phoenix Wright game, and I haven't really played anything quite like it since. So, I don't know. I'm curious to see where this goes, because these Famicom Detective Club games are pretty well regarded. Uh, you know, Obviously, they're not huge sellers. I, I couldn't imagine them ever being, especially here in the United States, because they didn't really localize this stuff. <laughs> Like it's very no, Japanese. Right. Even the the all the they didn't even localize the voices. The voices are all in Japanese, which oh. I'm honestly thankful for. It's I'm I'm I like subtitled stuff. Um, so that's that's fine by me. I hope I find more time to play it. Uh, I also got the review code for Cash Cow DX on Switch, which I am finding vastly more playable than it was on VCS. Um, I think it's just the controller, to be perfectly honest, because I like to play it with a D-pad, and the D-pad on the VCS controller is that just circle thing, which isn't great. And uh, I did, I performed so much better on uh, my first run through on the Switch than I usually do on VCS. So I was really happy to get that. That game's just as good as it is there as it is uh, everywhere else. So, Question. big fat hooray! Yeah, go um, ahead. For the VCS, could you use like a PC controller? <laughs> I'm sure I could. I'm, okay, I'm sure I could curious. figure out how to synchronize it. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna. Because, I, I mean, one, I don't... I mean, I guess I could use... I have one of those Ultimate Blue... 8-Bit Do Ultimate Bluetooth controllers. I could probably mm-hmm. try to synchronize that. Um, I'm just a sucker. It's like, that's all no, the way upstairs. I, I mean, it's, it's cool, man. <laughs> I, I know with a lot of the, uh, you know, the big systems, you can't hook in uh, third-party controllers uh, like the 8-Bit Do or whatever, which is kind of a bummer, but I understand they want to make you buy their shit. Well, like you know, the eight bit do controller I have is synchronized to my Switch right now. Um, mm. But the uh, I would I would is assume it, you can. No, go ahead. Is it eight bit do or eight bit do? It's. I, I thought it was eight bit do because it's supposed to be like Nintendo. Oh, like eight right. bit do. There was a um, there was a product <laughs> at. So when I went to go for the SAG five uh, hundredth episode, they had yeah. these speakers from the company at the store. And when you turned them on, a little voice went, hey, bit do. Okay. So, I stand corrected. Because, well, I was on your camp. I was like, right, like Nintendo. That makes sense. But then I pressed a button and a voice came out and said do. I was like, well, that answers that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Because well, I fuck, hate I saying 8 bit do. Yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy about it either. I, I don't I'm, like I'm saying it. Used, I'm now used to saying 8 bit do. So, hooray. Okay. 8 bit do. All right. Sorry. I apologize for the interruption. No, that's it. I, I think I'm I'm basically done. There was one more thing I wanted to mention. Now I can't. Oh, right. i so I've been ever since Toriyama died. I've been slowly rewatching the original Dragon Ball, and because um, yeah. I, I I haven't watched that one nearly as much as I watch Dragon Ball Z because it wasn't as readily available when I was younger. Right. Um. And uh, I'm watching through it now. This is the first time I'm watching it uh, dubbed. Um, because uh, I only ever watched it uh, subtitled back in uh, back when I finally was able to watch the whole show beginning to end, and you know the first chunk of it is is fun, it's silly, and then uh, the, I find the Red Ribbon Saga just so difficult to get through until you get to you know r- kind of like right after that with Mercenary Tao, like not after it, it's kind of right. during it, right? It's before he actually takes down the Red Ribbon Army. The whole bit with Mercenary Tao is so cool, but after that, I forgot just how much I love 
where the show goes from there because I always love the Mar- World Martial Arts Tournament and Tian Shin Han is probably my favorite character in Dragon Ball and uh, I'm at the point where he I just finished the World Martial Arts Tournament where he fights him and it just it just doesn't fucking let up like Tian's such an asshole and the way the fight pans out and, and how Master Roshi kind of convinces him that his master is a dickhead and that he should you know try being a nice guy for a change and then as soon as he turns into a basically turns a new leaf and you know beats goku in the tournament by a technicality and they're all going out to dinner and then i forgot that this is when it happens when krillin uh goku is like oh crap i left my dragon ball and my power pole back at the stadium and krillin's like don't worry i'll go get it and as soon as he said i was like oh shit this is where krillin dies i forgot because he goes back, and that's where they yeah. just immediately jump into the King Piccolo saga. Yeah. And you get all that cool exposition dump about how when Master Roshi was young, and Tien's old master was his partner, and his like group fought off King Piccolo in the first place, and his master did the mafuba and tra- trapped them in a rice cooker, and like... Man, <laughs> I love Dragon Ball. That shit's so good. Old school and- Dragon Ball's really cool, because d- to me, anyway, it's a little more based, like... Not in reality, but it's like on Earth, where where we go after that is it's very like just out there. This is I feel like it's more most localized form, you know. I don't know if localized is the right thing so much as it's it's smaller scale to a Small, good, yes. degree, uh, right? Because it's like yeah. uh, one of the things I love about it is that's the sense of adventure you get from the episodes of like Goku traveling to a town that's full of like yes. you know people who live in the desert and like all these different cultures and and different magical things like no matter how strong goku gets there's always some sort of trick that can slow him down like something that just is beyond pure strength and like the whole message of the show is like look no matter how good you are there's always something to learn from other cultures and i've always i i love that so very much about this show and watching (laughs) <laughs> watching the whole transformation of Tien and watching that whole fight and Yamcha getting his leg broken and like seeing characters like Yamcha and Tien like be the strongest characters on the show uh, is is I also thought that was very cool like watching them be strong and viable yeah like uh, when I I first saw Z obviously because that mm-hmm. you know, that was my first right, introduction that was what was and yeah. you know and in the beginning they're all pretty pretty well up there right everyone's going up against napa and then uh it really just comes down to you know goku versus vegeta and everyone else gets killed but seeing where those characters all come from is is super cool and yeah obviously there's like master roshi is a very difficult character to deal with sometimes with the just this show is terrible to women it's so so bad to women like launch is such an awful character (laughs) yeah his his character is not but and the thing is, like he's such a badass when it comes to the fighting, though that it 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 makes him hard to hate. Well, it makes you forget about well, all that every, shit. Yeah. With minus the perversion stuff, every other aspect of his character is great. Like yeah. when he's having the whole conversation with Tien about like he finishes the tournament and he's still like kind of angry, but then people start crowding around him and cheering him, and he's just like, and Master Roshi's just like contacting him telepathically. Like, you see that adulation is a new new thing for you, but it's kind of cool, isn't it? All you got to do is not be a jerk and people will actually like you for your skills because you're super skilled. It's 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 such a good show. The original Dragon Ball is such a good show. Uh, and I, I kind of forgot how engrossing it was because like I'm now at the part point where I'm just like itching to watch the next episode. Uh, and then, you know, obviously I'm going to move on to Z, which the beginning of Z is just a whole lot of Gohan in the woods and it's going to be fine. I'll get through it. I'll get through it. Because uh, like my whole my whole purpose was like I'm gonna go through I'm gonna do all of it I'm gonna finally sit down and make myself watch all of GT eventually. No, I have to. Isn't there a new it. thing coming out? Yes, Daima is starting soon. Dragon Ball Daima, uh, where somehow they've all been turned into kids, which is super funny to me. Because like that was the whole thing in GT was Goku, yeah, was, a Goku was a kid, yeah. But like this is like everyone like. Piccolo's a kid. Piccolo was never a kid. Like that, that didn't right. That just, just, <laughs> Fuck it. Piccolo's a kid now. I love it. No, Piccolo was a kid. Was he? He was barfed up as an egg. Did he come out as a kid, or did he? No, come out? I was, can't remember. He, well, it wasn't in just Dragon Ball. He was like King King Pic- not King Piccolo, but he was like he's yeah, an old. He was, he was older. 
he was older, then he got yeah. the Dragon Balls and wished for his youth, and he fought in the tournament. And when Goku killed him, he hacked up an egg, and that's what the current gener- the current Piccolo, the current Piccolo is, is now. Yeah. What came out of the egg. No, he was a kid. He did come out as a kid. Never mind. He was but a it's kid? Like kid pi- yeah, for like a little bit. I swear he, he came out as a kid. I could be wrong. I'm misremembering. I could be mis- It's been a while since I've seen it. Regardless, it's Kid Goku, Kid Vegeta, uh, <clears throat> Kid Shin. Like, like everyone's a kid. It's so weird. I'm I'm super curious about it. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, because I love Super. Right. I know a lot of people had problems with Super. Super I thought was Super cool, was man. Super yeah. was fucking great. I lo- dude, anyway, I liked all the new yeah. characters they introduced too, like Hit and all of them. That was that was a cool show. Oh, Hit was so good. Yeah. That that freaking moment though, when he was it wasn't Hit. Was it Hit? When he first did the, uh, he pulled out the old Kaioken. When he Ooh, did like yeah. Super yeah, Saiyan was, Blue yeah. and like. That right, that was that was that was hit with the, yeah. the the fight against hit. Oh my god, that moment where they, but where he finally pulled that off and he 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 attacked him and it worked and the theme songs started playing. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, this is the yeah. coolest shit ever. And then what was it? Was Jiren showed Jiren, up and Jiren yeah. was just Jiren's mad, a bad he was dude. something else. Yeah. But they brought like my only gripe with Super was that they did Tien kind of dirty, right? They yeah. brought him into the tournament and everything, and then he didn't get to do anything cool. He was the only one who didn't really get yeah, to do something and, cool. Even Master did, Roshi yeah, did cool say, shit in yeah, there. Yeah, they, they gave a lot of characters space to do cool shit, and he didn't oh my get God. a spot. <laughs> Krillin finally getting revenge against Tambourine, the one who killed him in the episodes oh, I just dope. watched. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so bringing all that shit back, they just, I think they did such a good job with Super. And I know, it, it, yes, of course it has its issues, but... Everything Who cares? Does, though, All like, of Dragon Ball yeah. is Dragon Ball's a fucking mess, yeah. but it's fun. It's our mess. It's, fun. it's a it's happy fun. mess. <laughs> yeah, it's my mess. I love it. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's all I have. That that's everything that happened to me uh, in the last week that I think that I can think of. Okay. Okay. Damn. Uh-oh. Go ahead, Dean. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. What is all this? Right. Uh, are Are you okay? Did you just get something else you need to speak about? <laughs> <laughs> just our gambler text just sent me a oh, okay. headline. It says Atlantic City's top casino underpaid its online gambling taxes by one point one million dollars. That sounds wow. like a lot. <laughs> That's Borgata just a decimal point some, here or there. Yeah. Way to go, Borgata. Look um, at that. You know. All right. Uh what what have I been Um Yeah, I was here last week, so you guys know about the whole hand falling off thing. Um thankfully it's yeah. still getting better i've just been picking at all the skin i have like a new layer of skin under it it's cool i'm a lizard now it's great you've um, always been a lizard <laughs> dean yeah that's true i distinctly remember working with you with the joker's child and like you had to like sit outside on a bench in the heat because you just you were a lizard you you required the heat you were cold-blooded yeah well dude okay outside firstly, on a bench firstly eating bugs that that place was super cold. Like, right. They, to they be fair, they they kept cold. that place meat locker temperature. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm already a, a pretty skinny guy, and <laughs> then on top of that, I was younger, so I was even skinnier, and uh, I'd have to go in there with like a sweatshirt just to live, like and everybody shit. needed yeah. sweatshirts there. But I I love that. It was like be ninety degrees outside. I'm like, well, going to work. <laughs> In shorts and a hoodie. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Best day ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was a little rough, but like I I mean it could have been worse. Definitely could have been worse. I've worked in way worse conditions now. <laughs> um. Anyway, okay. Hand fall off. Uh, coming back. It's great. All that. Ten out of ten. Um, games. Ten out of ten fingers. Yeah, ten out of ten fingers. <laughs> um, no notes. As far as games go, I didn't really get any further on Steam World Heist, even though I would have liked to. Um, I played a bit of this game called Talented, which is on Steam. It's one of those like uh, bullet hell rogue like things, like Vampire Survivors, except instead of like having an entire playfield to move around, um, everything comes from the four cardinal directions and. Um, over, I think it's like 20 waves, uh, you know, everything gets increasingly worse and worse. Um, but you have all these classes that you have to fight against all these different monsters. It looks like a Game Boy game, actually. I would recommend, like, just taking a peek at the graphics, because they are really cool. Uh, it's got some pretty decent music. Uh, it's still in early access, but they did just add controller support, which was kind of enough for me to slap down some money to... Uh, play it. Uh, it's a really cool game, so if you like those type of games, and if you like 
something that looks retro, this is a really, really awesome one of those games. And I think it's, like, not super expensive. It's probably eight or nine bucks. Um, what else? Uh, I was playing earlier today uh, due to Matt, Matt Ramel, big friend, fan, fan, friend, fan, friend, fran, fran, fran of the show. Um, <laughs> he... He recommended Star Star Trucker. I think that's okay. what it's called, Star Trucker, um, which is like eighteen wheels of steel uh, trucker game, whatever the fuck uh, truck truck simulator. I think that's what it's called. Um, but you're in space, like it's it's like a cosmic uh, highway that you're on. So, um, I like I didn't know what to make of it at first. I I thought it was like kind of, you know, truck driver light. You know, it was going to be a fun adventure sort of game. We're, we're just taking shit A to B. It is not. It's a full-on truck sim, and then some, bro. Like, I was not ready. Uh, the first thing that happens is the truck is damaged because there's, like, a hole breach. You're outside the fucking truck fixing it. And then, you know, there, there's a user manual you have to read for everything. Um, I got to the point where I needed to back a truck up to a port, and I had to be within, like, 0.2 feet of clearance, uh, on a bunch. There's, like, three different axes to, uh, make your truck level in space, and it's really fucking difficult to do that when, like, you have no experience driving a fucking space truck. Um, so I don't- <laughs> Sounds I don't like know fucking gonna... work. Yeah, it's a lot of work, dude. Uh, and like, so I spent maybe 15, 20 minutes trying to just straighten out the truck enough to get it like backed in. And in that time, I lost the batteries for all of my like auxiliary and life source stuff. Like I oxygen ran out. I, I was too stupid to figure it out. So the game was like, all right, now you die. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try again. I don't know if that game's for me though. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's for I'm sure it's for someone. Uh, Matt really likes it. He said it's super interesting. Uh, but like, I don't know if I have the patience to drive a fucking space truck. Uh, like anyway, like that. I think it's just it's too much. Like too too many like micro stats and stuff that you got to pay attention to. Like I was getting flustered. That, like, I bumped the building accidentally, and I, then I had a hole breach. I had to get out of the fucking truck again while I was backing it up and fix the whole... It was... It was a whole thing. As you can see, I was getting very <laughs> flustered about it. So, uh, yeah, like, I'm, I'm gonna try it one more time, like, now that I'm a little informed about what I'm getting into from the beginning, but I just... I don't know if it's for me. Um, What else? The last thing was... What was the actual title of that again? It was... Star Trucker, I think it's called. Star it's Trucker? A, yeah, it's published by Raw Fury, which has published a lot of, like, really good shit recently. Oh, have they? I know they did a lot of arcade stuff. So, uh, they did a cassette piece. They published cassette piece, uh, which was really, really popular on um, consoles Trucker. and Steam. It was a Star Trucker? Yep. Nailed it. Yeah, I wish I had got a Trucker em. hat. Um, got him. <laughs> trucker em. hat. Trucker hat. Look yeah. at my trucker hat. Trucker hat. Yeah, that's I I kind of just kept muttering that to myself for like the half hour I played the game, but um I don't know. I I think like for people who like those sort of games, this is definitely it. It's it's very well presented. It looks good. It's pretty slick. There's I'm sure all the cool bells and whistles you'd want like in a trucker sim. I just I I don't know. I'll come back in a couple weeks and you know, we'll we'll revisit my my trucker life again, um, but I don't I don't think uh, I'll be getting employed <laughs> for very long. Uh, the last thing was I was playing Castlevania Circle of the Moon uh, because Dan got me all horny for Castlevania, and excellent. Uh, yeah, I I decided to start like my own little uh a series of sorts. Um, so I started with the Game Boy Advance stuff, and I'm gonna go to the end of the DS stuff. That's kind of my line I'm gonna draw. Um, and I forgot that Circle of the Moon is a lot more Castlevania and a lot less, like, RPG stuff. Um, not that that's a yeah. bad, bad thing, um, but it's, it's 
way different than the games become like later on, I guess. Um, but in, in a, in a good way, uh, I, I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, I did get to a point now where the game starts to turn on like the hard button. And there's definitely a point in this game where it's like, all right, we're going to see how good you are. Um, it's the God, what the hell's the thing's name? Aldramek, uh, Aldramek. It's a big, big robot looking head thing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I forget that, the, the name. I know what you're talking about, though. That, that yeah. fight sucks the fattest of dicks. Um, it's it's a very difficult, like, every attack is a giant, sw- like, swipe that takes up half the screen. Uh, you have to, like, recognize a lot of the patterns. You, and I, the, the boss has a lot of uh, health. So it does not go down without a fight. I don't remember, because I've beaten Circle of the Moon before. I don't remember how I did it. Uh, cause I'm trying to think about what I have compared to like what I need to do. And I'm like, I think I'm just going to have to get good. I don't think there's a way I can like RPG my way out of this or level up. I think I'm just going to have to get good and, and, uh, and face this monster. So that's, that's where I'm at. I think that's like halfway through the game, maybe a little less, but I've, I've been enjoying it. I, I, for anyone who hasn't played these games, but like stuff like um hollow knight or um ori in the blind forest dude like what are you what the fuck are you doing this is the one that made all those like a thing so download them buy them uh, yeah buy them buy them you don't yeah or download them that's what i meant that's what i meant when i said it the first time download them on the console that you <laughs> clearly own um so, yeah, there's plenty of ways to get them now. There's the Castlevania Advance collection for all the advanced games, and there's the Castlevania Dominus. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes, the Dominus collection. Dominus collection for all the, the DS ones. Dominus Pizza. Uh, I did forget, as a nice uh, bonus, that the Advance collection comes with Dracula X. So I'll probably poke into that a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to beat it, because from what I remember, that's like a pretty hard game, isn't it? It certainly can be. Um, there's definitely a areas of that game that are cheap as hell, but I love that game. And doesn't I mean? And plus, you now have save states, so that is true. That is true. I haven't been <laughs> just abuse that much. shit, and you're good to yeah. go. Yeah, I, yep. I, I think I will. All right. Yeah, that's that's definitely worth it. So that game is well worth playing if you can abuse save save states for sure. The just the soundtrack of the visuals alone make that game for all of its shortcomings as far as the actual like gameplay yeah. is concerned it's it's it is it is an audio and visual delight on the super nintendo all right i'm i'm definitely going to check it out then once i get through the uh advanced things um yeah i think that's i think that's it honestly i wanted to do more but every night like i've played for an hour hour and a half and i'm just dead tired i end up like just crashing out in in a chair and then i wake up an hour later with a stiff neck and need to go lay down <laughs> Yeah, I've been <laughs> dead tired this week, too. This month is going to be rough because I'm covering Quizzo every Wednesday night. And then every Thursday night, I have a podcast. And every Friday night, I have this podcast. So I'm not getting I'm not getting the sleep I need. But I am going to earn some too. extra money, so... Hooray. Money's also good. So hey. I'm told. I, I don't remember what it's <laughs> like to have it. I've never I had any much of it, so... <laughs> Oh, and I goodness. did back in the old days. Remember work like still I was still living at home with my parents, but I had a full time job at Funco Lane and was like just fucking rolling oh, in dough. Fun money. I remember fun money. Yeah. That doesn't exist No anymore. responsibilities, but lots of money. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah. Those were the Good days. times. Great oldies. Dan, my what friend. do you got? Oh man, so to cancer. The, uh, <laughs> nailed it. Yes. <laughs> nailed it. Stud. End of podcast. Oh, I did, so, actually, yeah. I did actually order the Steam okay. Deck yesterday. Oh, sweet. I think it was either yesterday or today. Everything cleared and the Steam Deck has been ordered. Everything should theoretically be on its way to you when it actually shows up. Who the hell knows? But everything should be in some way, shape, or form on its way to you. Outstanding. Very excited. I'm I am still legitimately like blown away by everyone's generosity and love and <coughs> care and all of that. And I I'm I'm fucking super excited. Um 
the uh, so th- this week is the recovery week, right? Last week um, when we recorded, I had just gotten the infusion uh, the day before, so I was all fucking hopped up on steroids, feeling great, you know. Um, and then the steroids wear off um, about a day or two after the infusion. Um, or well, like two days after the infusion is, is, is about when the steroids wear off. So like Saturday I woke up and I was like, Oh, there it is. Yep. That's, that's the feel. Cool. Um, so then just the, this entire week has just been, um, the recovery part and it really doesn't hit me or it really didn't hit me too hard until like, I don't know, like sun, like Monday really is when I started feeling like, I just feel shitty. You know, um, I thankfully still am avoiding nausea, um, which makes me very, very happy because feeling nauseous uh, sucks, you know, like it's awful. But the um, the fucking bone pain is still just this unreal sensation um, that that man, it's just fucking Mm -hmm. weird. And it's, it's hard to, what, what makes it especially hard during the recovery week is that the bone pain kicks in, um, pretty significantly. And my oncologist has suggested, not strongly suggested, but suggested that I try to stay away from, um, NSAID pain relievers as much as possible. Um, so things like ibuprofen, naproxen, oh, stuff that, uh, that like sort of stuff. Right? I, it, it's it's harder on your liver, and oh, your liver's yeah, already process, doing yeah. so much with the chemo. Um, or at least that's what they told me. So they they prefer that you take Tylenol. And my entire life, Tylenol has never done shit for me. Like, if it's, take a Tylenol. I'm like, no, nah, pass. It's all right. I, it's not going to matter. Um, so I'm not getting as much, like you just said, Chris, I'm not getting as much sleep as I need to, cause I'll sleep for like an hour and a half, two hours. And then I have to get up and walk around because my <laughs> legs just fucking hurt, you know, um, or my back hurts or, or whatever it is. Theoretically that should get better as the infusions go on. Um, because the, uh, lesions that are in the bone will be taken care of, um, or will certainly be, you know, knock on wood, smaller um, as as things are going on. So, like the the earlier part of the week was really just kind of spent resting, logging on to work from home because um, I do I work from home the week after my recovery week, and then I'll go back in, you know, next week for a couple of days, and then my next infusion is next Friday, but. It, getting up, like walking downstairs and like sitting down in my chair. I'm like, Oh fuck. All right. I'm gonna need a minute. Hold on. <laughs> like, I just really get worn out from it. it. It's wild. So it doesn't really leave a lot of time for like gaming, um, earlier in the week. So I had to squeeze a lot of shit in, uh, here these last couple of days. And I finished, uh, symphony of the night, um, the other day. And picked up the uh, the Dominus <clears throat> collection. What were you were just talking about, Dean, um, because the next game on the list after Symphony of the Night is Order of Ecclesia. And uh, I think after what I put in today, I'm about halfway through Order of Ecclesia, maybe a little bit more than halfway. Um, it's just such a good fucking game. It's so good. Like Order of Ecclesia is. It, it, the 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 storyline like Shino is such a good character. The glyph system I think is really cool, really interesting. Um, the uh, just the way that game looks, the way it sounds, the way it controls, everything about that game is just fucking outstanding. And it sold like not nearly well enough when when it came. Like none of the Egovania stuff really sold very well um which is such a damn shame i mean i'm i'm happy that they it sold well enough to for them to let him continue to make it you know um but it just it never really got the audience that it deserves so i'm i'm so hopeful with this collection that more people get a chance to play these games cuz they're fucking great and it does they did seem a really like that's- good 
happening. There's been there's yeah. definitely been a lot of chatter about like how come nobody told me about this Shinoa character? Why didn't anybody tell me that Order of Ecclesia was so good? And it's like, well, we did. We did. <laughs> we were shouting. For everybody the told you, but yeah. yeah. But what seems to but be you the just answer? Didn't buy it. What seems to be the answer more often more often than not that I keep seeing is because you were five. Well, uh, that too. There's a lot of younger people who are discovering these games now for the first time because they didn't realize that Symphony of the Night isn't actually the pinnacle of Castlevania for a lot of people. I, it's my personal favorite, I think. But like, I go back and forth between that and uh, Dawn of Sorrow. Like, Dawn of Sorrow is so good. All those GBA and DS ones are like. They're all around the same like goodness level, level more of or less, with sure. Symphony of the Night. They're yeah. extremely they, they really high are. caliber games. Well, that makes me just and makes they, me happy to see it getting out there. They've they, done a really good job incorporating the like the dual screen stuff onto like the television. Works just fine. It's great. Now I've uh, I heard the um was the drawing the glyphs is like a, a QTE the, instead of like yeah. actually drawing it on the screen because like I know the, they they mentioned the one game you have to move a cursor around because that's like you had to like draw to get rid of blocks or something on the screen but the glyphs yeah. they're just yeah. like no nah, we're we're not going to make you do that it's just a quick time event basically I don't I haven't done that one yet I don't know I've I've only I've only played right, that's through um, Order of Ecclesia that's Dawn. Um, yeah, I've only played through that. Uh, so I, 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 I don't know. I can't speak to that. I really, really want to play it. I wish I had the, uh, oh, the, I'm sad because gimmick two came out and I didn't buy it because I, you know, I have yeah. a game I need to be playing right now for review and I'm begging, I'm just begging for a review code for gimmick two because I want to play it so freaking bad. But I also am like, I want to wait for the physical version and it's, yeah. That's going to be such a problem for the next couple of months because, like, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, perfect example. I need to get right. that physically. I'm not going to buy it twice. I can't make myself buy that game twice. No. That's just, it's too much money. But the physical version doesn't come out until freaking November. The physical version of Gimmick, I, I don't think, is until next year. Like, yeah, I want to play. But give it to me now. <sighs> I did, uh,. I did also finish, I just remembered, because it really didn't take very long. I finished um, uh, the fucking remastered, the Haunted Castle. Uh, oh, thing. yeah. Castle. Oh, nice, man. How Castle. the fuck did I say it that way? I don't know, but I'm glad you Castle. did. Castle. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> it was really cool. Like, it's a actual playable version of that game. Like, and it's not super hard. Like, it's tough you know like it, it's it's a tough game but the dracula fight is really cool um m2 did a really nice job making it look like haunted castle but <laughs> but not but, but so much better yeah, yeah like it's it looks weird really good. It, it's it's weird how how much it looks like a thing it doesn't look like at all is it's a very weird uh fucking thing but it begs the question totally what playable if this really game fun wasn't ass yeah yeah it's a, a fucking commendable effort um and i really enjoyed it so uh that's that's really been the uh the scope of my game i mean pad and snap and and all of that shit um i do want to call out though specifically uh i received a care package earlier this week from the weekend rental uh, fr- family. And uh, I'm currently wearing my recovering slut hat as we record, <laughs> um, which just makes me so fucking happy. Like I opened this box <laughs> up. And I was just like, yes, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> and I need to like wear hats all the time now because uh, this week my hair is gone. That That was it. It was this week. And I, I finally took the uh, the razor to it yesterday. I still have a little bit of a beard left. Like, it's it's not my beard, certainly, but it is, it is more than, like, I went into uh, one of the, uh, the dispensaries around here uh, to pick something up the other day. And, like, I walked in there, and the dude who was behind the counter, I, I didn't ask him. 
if he was also going through chemo. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> Probably not good to be going around asking people. No, like your beard is patchy as fuck. Is that because you are also in my situation? Like I still had a better beard with this patchy ass shit that I've got on my face right now. Um, but yeah, it's it was fucking wild. Like I, I would be in the shower. And it was like a fucking horror movie, like just rubbing my hands through my hair and just fucking clumps were coming out. And I was like, all right, that's enough. So thank you for the hat that is now covering my bald ass fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin head. Uh, Dan, um, and Dan, the Godzilla I'm, figure I'm, is now on my nightstand. I love it. I love you, boys. Thank you. All I'm saying is, why are you going to let this stop you from living your perk angle era? <laughs> sure that's all I i'm mean, saying man you're yeah. one moonsault no. off of a stage away <sighs> boy yeah it's uh chris you don't have to get that don't worry wild, it's fine man. i'm just over here i'm over here pondering the question that i know all of our listeners are wondering as well does the carbon match What's the that? drapes Ooh. uh Ooh. it's getting there <laughs> it's getting there yeah the uh it's it's weird like my leg hair and thank my eyebrows are still there um my eyelashes are still there underarms gone uh crotch on its way to being gone leg hair and arm hair no difference <laughs> cuz fuck <laughs> why why not dude get rid of all <laughs> of it man just decrease wind resistance to zero I, I fucking I might if if everything goes but my leg and arm hair, I might just shave it just because just to fucking do it. Yes. Just to be like, what? Yes. Uh, yeah. Just <laughs> like fuck you. You don't get to stay. It's very strange. It's very you're weird. Not the hair uh, I care about. <laughs> you're not. I don't care about my fucking arm hair. But <laughs> get off me. <laughs> oh shit. Well, that went yeah. faster than expected. Yeah. Castlevania's great. Play Castlevania. Everyone should. And everyone Everybody shall. should. Someday. Banana Slammer. Someday. Some- yeah, Banana Slammer. Banana Slammer. Yeah. All, right. All right. Well, I guess... Can we... If, can if we that's get- the case... Can what? <sighs> what? I was going to say, can we, just, can we just get to this damn cartoon? No, we still got to do week old news. No, I know, but I'm just, I'm so annoyed that we have to talk about this cartoon. I don't even want to do week old news. I don't even want well, to do it. Tough shit, pal. That's fair. We've, we've got a schedule to stick to, goddammit. I have a script, and I'm going to follow it. So right now, we're going to take ourselves a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, what's going on in the world of video games. Don't worry, it's a light week for week old news, so we can just get right to ranting and raving about Donkey Kong sooner than later. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. And now here's a quick look at what's new in the gratuitous rainbow spectrum at StoneAgeGamer.com. Ah, first up... In this month's Nintendo report, Chris takes a look at the Nintendo franchises that start with the letter H and I. Neither letter had enough to fill a single entry, so we get a double blast of alphabetical goodness this time around. Has Nintendo made a hockey game since NHL Stanley Cup for SNES? Does that count for H? Anyway, could we find ourselves visiting Ho... I. It was in the uh, hockey. What? I put made a hockey category because there was ice hockey and an NHL Stanley Cup. Oh, okay. All right, that's fair. Could we find ourselves visiting Hotel Dusk again someday? Does Hogan Sally have... No, it doesn't. Does Hogan Sally have a future? No. (laughs) I know I could use a fresh opportunity to shoot cardboard cutouts of gangsters in my life, but it's not going to happen. We don't live in a fucking perfect world. The planet is not a wish-granting factory. So, no. Anyway, find out all about it in the Nintendo Report. Harmonies, hotels, and hockey... (laughs) Uh, Next, it's time for another 16-bit brawl. This time around, I took a look at Sparkster. Two different games with the same names and box art. With the original masterpiece, Rock Knight Adventures, being a Sega Genesis exclusive, did that platform sequel have an unfair advantage? 
Does adding a slot machine to the gameplay make for a fun addition? Why is screen cramping such an issue on both of these releases? Find out which jetpack-fueled possum is better in 16-bit brawl Sparkster SNES versus Genesis. Finally, if you've ever wanted a video game about learning karate from your superintendent while avoiding school bullies dressed like skeletons... Alright, tough bonozos! Because the Karate Kid on NES has pretty much nothing to do with the Karate Kid movie. No, this game's all about the Karate Kid Part 2, complete with a trip through scenic Okinawa, rescuing a girl from a bell tower during a typhoon, chopping a bunch of ice blocks with your bare hands, and of course, a climactic showdown with Chosen. But is the LG uh, is the LJN published NES game any good or does it deserve less than a sterling reputation? Find out in Stone Age Gamer Review, the Karate Kid. <laughs> For all this more, be sure to Karate. check out the gratuitous Rambo Spectrum under the blog section every Wednesday at StoneAgeGamer.com. Guess what? We're, we're back. back. Holy shit. Oh, we're back. back. We're so In back. Front. We're back wow. like we never left. We are like back. We never left. Okay. Now, before we get to anything else, we're going to talk about uh, what's new at Stone Age Gamer. And uh, again, it hasn't been a crazy busy week. We did, we sold we sold out of like a metric ton of Evercade games over the uh, uh, Labor Day sale, which was kind of surprising. That's to awesome. Me. Um, but just just because like the discount wasn't crazy big on them, it was just a ten percent discount. But like. We sold out just about everything, so play. We're, we're placing a, a big order for uh, Evercade cartridges. Are you guys um, like a pretty big retailer for them, or like we do pretty well with those? I, well, I was going to say, do like a lot of people carry Evercade stuff? A lot of online places do. I think. I mean, I, I guess I don't really know about it a lot, but uh, it's. They're they're around. They're not hard to find. No, obviously um, I don't want to plug anyone besides you know Stone Age Gamer, the only place to get your Evercade right. cartridges. But uh, the nice. that's right, yeah. exclusive yeah. online. Just when I was thinking about it, I haven't seen a lot of places carry them. I've seen like maybe one or two. Right. Well, we we certainly carry them, and they they move pretty well, and uh, they moved especially well over the uh, during the sale. So we're gonna we're gonna do a big restock on those. We're also gonna be um, we just. Uh, made our first order with Collector Vision, so we're going to be carrying a whole mess of uh, homebrew ColecoVision cartridges um, cool. pretty soon. Uh, we've been uh, in chats with them to to get some sort of like wholesale going on so we could actually sell them on our website, and we've got like, I don't know, 25 really or awesome. 30 games to get started with. I'm pretty stoked about it. Uh, they had a bunch of stuff that I wasn't, I wasn't 100% sure on the... Um, what the what the rights on them were because they have like a lot of homebrews of existing games of like you know here is this actual like licensed game on ColecoVision and I wasn't one hundred percent positive <laughs> GTA so Five like, on Coleco <laughs> on ColecoVision I freaking wish would order that for sure <laughs> but like all pretty much anything original <laughs> that they had uh, plus they just ported Sydney Hunter to Master System so we we grabbed that too like a, a handful of copies of that uh, I'm really excited about it because uh, Collector Vision stuff is super cool so. That's gonna be a. That's really cool. That's gonna be a good time. And then we also had a uh, a big restock of Kirby plush. It's just a like twelve different Kirby plushes. So. How big do they come? <laughs> can I live in one? Uh, we don't have any live in ones. Okay. Uh, let me actually. I can. I can. I can get the list real quick. Yeah, of no, what let, we let's, actually let's, got. Let's see what sizes so what you got, the, man. Uh, what were the Kirby plush that we just got in? Um, we have the Kirby's Adventure All Star Collection six inch, the Club Mochi Kirby Club Mochi Mochi Kirby Junior six inch plush, Kirby's Adventure Kirby of the Stars Kirby Artist plush, uh, Kirby's Adventure Helmet with Toy Hammer, Kirby Nui Guru Knit six inch plush, Kirby Nuri Guru Knit Hovering six inch plush, uh, Kirby five inch Heart plush. 
Uh, oh, and then there's uh, an Amy, uh, two Amy from Sonics, and a Cuphead and a Mugman. But yeah, that's what we got. Dude, love it. And awesome. You, like, collect all those over at Stone Age Gamer. Why, like, why gotta not? Gotta catch them yeah, all. Gotta, gotta catch all the Kirbys. That's, that's what they say. Uh, and with that, uh, it's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everyone's favorite segment. Strap yourselves in. It's Week Old News. All right, welcome to Week Old News, where, all, where we talk about all the news that was new a week ago. And uh, this is kind of a short week in Week Old News. Kind of a short week. Not a... Not a lot going on, but the stories that are out there are definitely worth discussing. Oh, boy. Hit us with those gems. All right, so first off, no spoilers, all right? Because this was earlier in the week. IGN reports, Concord is estimated to have sold only 25,000 units. Here's why analysts think it failed. Uh, I didn't read through the article. I know exactly why it failed. Nobody fucking wanted to play this game. (laughs) Yeah. The coolest thing about it was the controller. Like the special edition Concord controller, I don't that even looks remember fucking seeing it. Really nice. It looks really nice. Yeah. It's just a Dual Shock in a cool colorway, but yeah, it did not sell well. I Can wonder I? if that's going to have any negative implications for them. I, I really don't know, but I do know that when we all saw the trailer, we said that doesn't look very good. <laughs> yeah, it looked. I, I mean, I I don't remember exactly what I said. I think. I said it looked fine. I, I think, I or think maybe you said I said it looked it. fine. I don't remember. I, I think that you said it looked fine at best, and I was pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that I, I had a distaste for this off the get go, just because it seemed I, I hated the writing. It just smelled to me of like this is what people who've never seen Guardians of the Galaxy think Guardians of the Galaxy is. And, like, yeah. everything just was generic and uninspired, and I, I just, I mean, obviously you can go back and, and uh, double-check me, because our listeners know better than I do what I've said, because I don't pay attention yeah, certainly. to myself. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I remember feeling a whole lot of nothing when I first saw this one, and, uh, eh, it's, uh, yeah. th- th- that, that sentiment seemed to be pretty solid throughout the course of the internet, just looking at this and saying, like, even if this is just middling at best... In the hero shooter genre, if you just release a middling game, no one's going to play it because people are already I already do. playing. You, you're only the only thing you're going to be able to do with this genre of game at this point is pull existing u- users from other games. And if your game isn't better than the other game they're already playing, no they're not going to play stop it. playing it to try right. yours out. It's just not going to happen that well, way. And then, not to mention, like, I, and granted, they did announce it not all that long ago, but like. The next big one, if there's going to be one, is going to be that Marvel uh, one that's coming out soon. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, it's got but the that's got and... Spider Man. Yeah, right. You know, like... Sp- Spooder Man goes a long way. I splooge for the spood, but uh, <laughs> like, so my my thing is like, who who thought this was a good idea? Because clearly, like you you spent like an entire development cycle making this game. It didn't just appear overnight. And They've I been feel- working on this for ten years, right? So, well, okay, oh, well, right. near nearly ten years. So when this started development, it was a big. They deal, were just right? like, "Oh, yeah. this is the next big thing. We better get in on this. What's popular right now? Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, let's do that." I feel like there should have been a point to step back for a minute and have pivoted because you know what? Fortnite did that. Like they had a model that wasn't working, and then completely retooled their game to something that made them billions of dollars at this point <laughs> probably yeah it has to be yeah and and like i said that game started as like a wave-based survival game i remember because i i was gonna buy that version of the game and then they retooled it to whatever the fu- i mean granted I, I should be one to talk i just don't like fortnite but whatever it is now and like you know, it became a giant success, and I, this is the opposite where someone stuck to their guns way too fucking long. And I mean, granted, it, the game had really bad personality too. That's that's also the yeah, that's the thing: the character designs, its personality, etc. Which leads us to our next story: Polygon reports Sony pulls Concord from sale will refund customers. This game made it on the market for two weeks. And it did so poorly that Sony was like, you know what? We're going to take, we're, we're going to pull this back. We're, we're going to give everybody their money back. 
uh, and we're going to rethink what we're going to do with this game. I don't know what it's going to turn into. It, I mean, it's. I have to assume free to play because a hundred percent. It's what else are you going to do? Like, I cannot. You can't sell this game. You can't sell this property unless you rejigger its entire personality. Because the, the well, cause it's just the it's personality one of those, is not good. It's just not a good personality. It's it's one of those things where you know, like you were just saying, it. Ten years ago, when I started thinking about this, it it was okay. This is what's popular. This is what we're going to try to do, right? And this studio obviously has put a lot of time and effort into it, and Sony believed in it so much that they bought the studio, right? Like, they, they went and purchased the studio so that this would be their looter shooter that would be out there. Um, it It's such a colossal fucking disaster. Because, like... I, man, I just, <laughs> I'm so fucking, but like, it's so the weird. Thing. What you're, what you're talking about right now. Because I want to defend the, like, I want to defend the work and the effort that was put into this project, and that's, right? Because obviously there was it, it, love it, and, and all of that, but. It, well, let's, but let's preface that. You're not, yeah, like. You're not Fortnite, you're not Overwatch. No, you're right. You're, that's, Stop. that's also true. Well. Don't do it. But that's th that. With what's really interesting that's happening right now, specifically with this game, with PlayStation right now, is this game is like the perfect encapsulation of everything that's wrong with Sony's philosophy f towards game design right now. And on the yeah. flip side of that, the most excited I've been for a PlayStation game, and the most excited I've seen almost anyone for a PlayStation property in a long time is Astrobot a game with I, a third of the budget uh, a th yeah. like a fraction of the amount of dev time it looks amazing it's fun it's paying homage to all this PlayStation history that has not been fostered for generations and it, it's getting rave reviews people are genuinely excited to play it and like it's, it couldn't be more. I different. really want to play it, so, and it's not my style of thing. So but I'm really I excited really want to play it. My my sister got a copy of it so that John could go over and play it because John's been seeing ads for it and he really wants to play it. I'm like, I really want to play it too, but I can't drop five hundred dollars on a fucking PlayStation Five. <laughs> yeah, I just can't yeah. do it. But this is the first game that's come out that's been like, yeah, you know what? I actually really want to play this. I'm genuinely interested in playing this game. It looks great. Controller uh, looks sexy AF too. It's my it's my deepest hope that Sony looks at this entire situation and says, "Wait a second, what if we approach?" Like, I'm not saying turn into Nintendo. I'm saying maybe take just a slight bit of hint from what makes Nintendo so successful. Just like look at what they do and apply just a fraction of that. To your massive back catalog of dead IP and be like, you know what? Yeah. Why don't we foster some of this stuff and see what it turns into? Look what they did with Ratchet for so long. They did Ratchet for generations and it just kind of like, okay, well, where'd Jack and Daxter go? Like, when Dude, I, I look back at my days PlayStation yeah. collection, like, I have a ton of PlayStation 1 games, a ton of PlayStation 2 games, and it was PlayStation 3 a lot of was stuff when they started there. to change yeah. their development philosophy to, we're going to make these hyper-real, very cinematic you know, first-party things. Oh, dude, remember? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to chase the AAA Kill bug. Zone, and I have Haze, like all those stupid like fucking games. Eight PS3 games. Resistance. I have right. tons of PlayStation One and Two games, and when you look mm -hmm. at the the stuff that came out during that era, and where they, they, they there was a second jumping flash. They were cranking out <laughs> Sly Cooper games. They were cranking out Jack and Daxter games. Like they were doing the things that that put them that put them on the map and made these things so beloved. So when you got something like PlayStation All Stars, and there were these characters in there, people were excited to see, and then like. Didn't other characters they weren't so excited to see and it just didn't didn't go anywhere <laughs> and now uh, we're on playstation yeah. 5 and like i know the ps5 has sold a bajillion copies and i know it's a decent system but 
you also have this prevailing sense from so many people that where are all the games for this system? Like, where's where's the thing that's like, oh, I need P- PS5 for this this thing. Like, where's my big exclusive thing outside of like Sp- Spider Man? Like, the games exist. I'm not oh, saying there's man. no games like, on PS5, game but it's so also. Good. Well, I mean, you but guys also are- it's it, it, yes, it, it is, but it's also like it, it's. It, wasn't that one also on PS4, or was that only PS5? That was only PS5. I'm pretty sure. So I think hooray. I think the point that you're getting to is because Nintendo does the same thing, right? Like you have the big fucking Zelda, right? Like Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, these big epic like that's their triple A. But then you also get this new Zelda game <clears throat> that's coming out. You get the Princess Peach game. You get the iconic characters, but in smaller Double A titles, yeah. You, you know, get, not even well, single A titles. You get Mio the Smiling you get Double Man. A titles. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're not going to make a ton of money off of that, but they don't have to because it didn't cost them a ton of money to make. So you're just they're Sony's philosophy, and they've said so much that they're chasing after these like big live. They want these ongoing titles. They want their they doubling down on all these bad decisions that players tend to hate, right? And they, their president right. keeps saying these things like, no, we're going to double down on this. Like, this is what we're going all in on. We're going to dedicate more money to trying to make more games like this. And it's like, you can't make more games. There's only so many hours in the day. If you would just not co- focus on making all of the money and just be okay with making a whole fuckload of money, you could be doing that. <laughs> and you would be doing right, your like brand where- so much more service. Where is the new Hot Shots Golf? Oh, dude, Where is don't the even new get me Ape fucking Escape. started. Uh, stop. You shut your <laughs> the new both Ape you Escape. Shut up. Shut up. You, like, you're hurting me. You're hurting. Why are you talking about? You know I love. Well, these because games. I've I've been working on right. I've been writing these uh, the Nintendo reports. We just talked about those in the the ads, right? God, and so those good. were going so fun that I decided to start doing the PlayStation reports. And I'm only two in, and they're fucking depressing because it's just right. the thing after thing. Like, man, I remember this game. They really never did anything else with this, did they? They just, so, all right, well, fuck it, we're done. Hot shot. And sometimes they do, but sometimes, <laughs> a lot of times, they just fucking don't. Well, so Hot Shots hasn't most... really had, like, a game game in a long time, but, like, it was no. everybody's golf for a while, and that was last out on PS4, and there has, but that was way early in its cycle. Like, we haven't had anything else in a very long time. And I, I mean, Ape Escape. What, when was the last time there was an actual Ape Escape? Like fucking PSP? Apes, probably. I, like I'll do. I'll, here's a couple. Here's a couple of really interesting ones. Um, remember when Wreck It Ralph came out and yeah. like Cubert all of a sudden had a bunch of popularity, right? Because yes. like they had this yeah. great new Cubert CG model in the movie, and like, oh look, this character's getting a bunch of attention. Sony owns Cubert. <laughs> Sony owns Cubert. So where's a new Kubert game? That like is that not a recognizable brand? There was an entire successful TV season of Twisted Metal. And where's no Twisted Metal. No Twisted game. Metal. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Where, where is Siphon Filter? Right? What happened to SOCOM? Where is, like, uh, where is Jet oh, Moto? No. Where is Cool Borders? <laughs> like and how how fun would it be? If cause, and honestly, I don't even care that it would be stealing directly from Nintendo. Go the fucking Mario route, and the next Cool Borders, all of the fucking riders should be PlayStation owned IP characters. Like make make Astro Bot into the you know whatever fucking I don't Jet it. Moto. All of the riders like like Mario Kart. You've got a fucking Jack and Daxter themed jet ski and a fucking Kratos themed at a fat princess and what whatever you know but all of that shit i the twisted metal one fucking baffles me well i so how, even go ahead finish how yeah no i mean <laughs> you're just, right. just yeah. how yeah. how did you just make how? a whole ass tv how did series you... out of this and this not have a game thing? you've got nothing to, even borderlands was ready with a new borderlands uh right? a new borderlands game announcement 
even though that movie tanked, they were ready with the next game announcement. Well, so Sony hasn't been doing great for a, a while, and then on top of that, I feel like they had a huge hit during the summer with Helldivers, and they completely bungled that game with, like, the restrictions they put on, uh about where the game could be played and what countries and whatnot yeah. and you had to have a and PlayStation had to sign account in. Yeah. Or like and then cross play wasn't gonna work. Like a lot of people got very upset to the point where like some people aren't even buying Sony games anymore. Yeah. It it's fucking wild. And it's, now they're talking about interesting. They are successful a in spite of themselves. A PS five Pro? Like it's bad climate, man. <laughs> Especially because of what Xbox did, I really don't think like people want a new iteration system. It, it's just it's it's toxic waters at the moment. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, we have this this problem right now of you know, there's the economy's not super great in this country, no. and there's just no. I, I I can only speak for myself, but I can't even consider buying a PlayStation Five. I just can't. And if I'm ever, if I'm going to get, if I'm going to set aside money for a new platform, it's going to be the next Nintendo one. And it's like that template. I don't want everyone to be, be Nintendo because when I'm think back to like when I was really playing on multiple platforms, like everyone had their own personalities, right? Like I played a ton of GameCube games and PS2 games, and a handful of Xbox games, right? Because Xbox just has never really been exactly my cup of tea, but... It's its own personality, it was there, for sure, it was back own personality, then. and they yeah. had their own cool games. Like, yeah. there was a reason to play on the different platforms. Like, just about everything I want is on Switch. Like, my kind of games. But, like, as a... Thinking back to, like, my PlayStation... Like, my multi-platform days, when I was writing this blog that I'm putting together for next week, I was like, I really did... I played a shitload of PlayStation back in the day. I loved PS1 and PS2. I always had a chip on my shoulder about PS2 because of the way it killed Dreamcast, but still, sure. I loved those systems. I really did. Well, every time every time we do the 10, 20, 30, 40, and we're talking PlayStation 2, it's just fucking <laughs> game <laughs> after game after game. It's just fucking hit after hit after I mean, hit. It's over 10 years of bangers, man. <laughs> Yeah, they just they just completely left and right annihilated and the center. PS1 and PS2 g- generation. They just completely killed it. Yeah. And you know, Xbox 360 was great during its whole thing and then Xbox just kind of lost their fucking minds because they had a great first half of that generation and then PlayStation 3 came back with a vengeance and their red ring of death and everything. Oh, and then yeah. just gaming just kept getting more expensive. Got, just ever, yeah. All these projects just kept getting more and more ambitious but and more and more mention, expensive. Like, things became media centers for a while. Like That was the whole Xbox mm-hmm. One's gimmick, and I, right. I felt like that was a huge derailment for an entire generation was trying to get people to come back to that company because they really, really hurt like their user base with that one system. <laughs> Not Which, like, great. it was small just, to begin it, with. <laughs> like, it, and, and not saying, like, people don't like Xbox. I'm not. I have an Xbox. I do play it a lot. But I I can definitely see where people were hurt by that. Uh, and the PS4 was a very strong system iteration. Even though that, like, I feel now we're in the very late stages of just consoles in general. Soon everything will be a fucking PC with just a storefront on it, I'm sure, but... Well, I'm hoping that that's not the case, because I don't want it to obviously be. that's not the direction Nintendo's going, and I can't... I cannot stop hoping... I mean, don't hoping. say obviously. We don't well, know shit true. about the Switch we, 2. <laughs> we don't know what the Switch 2 is going to be, but it doesn't seem like that's the direction they're running because of the way they're making money right now. You're right. And I really hope against hope that Sony takes a look at what's happening right now, where you've got a ton of critical acclaim and genuine excitement for this game and the thing that you put a ton of money into making a hyper-realistic Me Too shooter game just completely fucking tanked. Like, if you just sit back and say, you know what, we can actually make more money and spend less money if we just do this smart. Shocking. If we just... Yeah. 
and well, the, the uh, worst it, thing is the the sh- shittiest part <clears throat> is that this normally comes down to the decision of people who are like out of touch with what people actually want. Sure, like those the people who are like you know invested in this and want what's best for us are the people on the front lines like making the games they're they're not the ones that are making the decisions about like what goes into the game what doesn't shit like that sadly yeah all right that was fun let's wild (laughs) here's to a better future i just (laughs) just Uh, last last thing about it yeah last thing about it if like if sony were really and i know they bought the studio when they were already developing the game like i get all that but like if you really wanted to make this kind of free to play looter shooter kind of thing you have socom kill zone and resistance you're right right there you're right why did you you, do you already another... have those yeah. properties why like, why add this other thing yeah was this just... theming like very necessary for for this like game like, did you need to have that paint job to it? Which is very annoying, by the way. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't think people really remember SOCOM. Because you, Halo oh came God. in and fucking ate everybody's well, you're lunch right. after you're right. that. Well, you, you're very but right. But SOCOM... That was the game to play it, before there was, like, oh a my big, God. like, user base for console shooters. That was the fucking game. And we've never gone back to it. It's very no. strange. Anyway... Well, it it, sh- it odd. took a shit on the PS3. Uh, like they had one that was really fucked bad. I remember. Yeah, I think that was SoCom's problem because SoCom, SoCom Four was on PS3. SoCom Confrontation was PS3. And they were both not great. SoCom continued to thrive well after Halo, right? Because the first SoCom was 2002. When so was it the was first SoCom. Halo? SoCom Two was. Uh, and SOCOM 3, where I think all PS2 or no, SOCOM 3 might have been PS3. The first Halo came out in 2001. The first SOCOM was in 2002. So, yeah. Was it? Halo, oh, yeah, Halo didn't need SOCOM's launch. SOCOM was just... That was the one that came with the headset. But uh, like, also that keep it took up. the fuck keep, off right. on PS2. Yeah, but the first in- PS3 one was Confrontation, and that was in 2008. Now, yes, Halo came out first, but there was no online multiplayer in Halo 1. SOCOM came with online multiplayer, so you right, were able, yeah. right out of the box. Halo 2 had the online multiplayer, and I don't think that came out to 2004, 2005? <clears throat> Maybe see, that's Halo. what I'm thinking of in that way, because that just became the default well, console well, online yeah, Halo shooting 2 experience. Was, Halo 2 was 04, SOCOM 3 was 05... And, and SOCOM 3... And Xbox Live was, like, I think retooled a little bit when Halo 2 launched, and it was a bit easier to to work because it was built into the system. Where the PS2, that was not the, the case. SOCOM was Yeah, you had what? to buy Final Fantasy XI and get the hard... Jesus <laughs> Christ, that was the, <laughs> or the fucking worst. Or the fucking modem or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, they made it hard to, like, play that game, too, because you couldn't get they did. The, the adapter with it when it came out at first. You had... Dan's right, you had to buy Final Fantasy, because I have the same fucking thing. <laughs> with the with the uh, the hard drive, too. Yeah, the hard. you had to have the hard drive to yeah. hook the modem into. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. my God. You're bringing back memories, Dan. They're not super great either. Yeah, Sorry. dude, because you, you also... Ha- you could have broadband, but I remember it also worked with dial-up. Man, you're... Yeah, this is bringing me way back. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours in SOCOM as a shitty teenager being a shitty I, teenager. I do also think its visual style has a lot to do with Concord's failure. Because when you look at the most popular games, great. when you look at the most popular games right now, when you look at Overwatch, yeah. it doesn't look hyper realistic. No, like when you look at no, Fortnite, it's goofy as fuck. Yeah, like those are the most popular games in the world right yeah, now. Yeah, they're colorful. Making this thing, if they had now, just imagine Concords exactly exactly the same way, except it's got some sort of really striking visual cartoonish style. It would have gotten a younger user base into it for sure. I I, th- I think it would have I think it would have turned more heads than being hyper yeah. realistic. Like you could have kept everything the exact same with that game, except made it look like a hi-fi rush or something, 
and now all of a sudden oh, you've got a cool. you, you've got a different flavor going on. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I digress. We've we've spent long enough on this on this story. It was a good topic. Moving though. on. Well, it, it, it was it's been, it was probably the most interesting thing that happened this week. Uh, one of my hate, most hated stories, Rocksteady reportedly, is from, comes from IGN. Rocksteady reportedly lays off staff following Suicide Squad kill the Justice League flop. The game caused a two hundred million dollar hit to revenue. Ouch! Yeah, it's not I mean, what you want. Sucks. It's yeah. not. Uh, it is, however, another one of those instances where uh, you could tell the game was not going to do well from the get-go. Yeah. Because, again, I remember seeing the trailer for that one when it first came out, and most the, the most of the voices that I heard online were like, oh, this could be interesting. Oh, it's this kind of game? No, thanks. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at with it when I found out what it was. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, it it sucks. I, I I feel I feel terrible again for people who have nothing to do with the decision making. They're just doing their jobs, making the characters, like doing everything to the best degree that they can. And there's, you know, it sucks when you do everything you can to put out a good product, and it's just not enough. <laughs> you know. I mean, do you remember like Rocksteady used to be like? They're, they're the Batman they, guys, aren't they? They were the yeah. That was that was the Batman team. The yeah. people could not wait to see what these guys were going to do next. Oh, you're right. And then they did this, and it was just like now that the the company's reputation is just tanked because of this game. Oh, it's gone. Don't yeah. they have a new Batman game coming out as well? I think so, and I think shit. Very few people care. Yeah, it's a, it's sucks. a VR game. Oh, ugh. I believe, yeah, which a is why few a few people care because yeah. it's just not a thing. Oof. Big oof. Yeah. So this is an interesting story, uh, and it actually might dovetail in a, a different story on our list here. Uh, Pure Xbox reports Capcom and Microsoft find solution to bring two new fighting collections to Xbox. So Cap Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection and Capcom Fighting Collection 2, two games that we have uh, mentioned in the past were conspicuously skipping Microsoft's platforms, are now... According to Capcom, quote, we're happy to announce that after technical discussions with our partners at Microsoft, Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection uh, uh, Arcade Classics and Capcom Fighting Collection 2 will release on Xbox One. This is lending huh. credence to my thought process that there's something with the way these games are being emulated that doesn't want to play well with the, the most X? recent hardware. Okay, right, because okay. these aren't coming on PS5 either. They're coming to PS4. Now, granted, right. they'll be playable on PS5. Five, sure. Because why but wouldn't they be? But they're emulating PS4 and Xbox One hardware to do it. Yeah. It's... That's weird. It's weird. Or but they just didn't want to put in the work to make it run on a new system. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't. I. I, I wish. I. I wish I did. But uh, I, I was going to ask. Like, did they? Did they give a reason? Because that's oddly very. They specific. just said. They just said technical issues, and um, the uh, there. I mean, obviously, these versions aren't coming till twenty twenty five, so it's going to be later than everybody else, right? But hey, at least they're getting them. Good for that's Xbox true. fans. Yeah. No, yeah. that's awesome. It is awesome, albeit a tad strange, and uh, another yeah. similar thing. I'll just skip ahead to this one because it's a similar thing. Uh, Tweak Town reports Microsoft gives new statement on why Black Myth Wukong isn't on Xbox yet. Because um, we were just talking about this. So the quote says... Yeah, last week. Um, yeah. As, as we have said before, we're excited for the launch of Black Myth Wukong on Xbox Series X and S and are working with Game Science to bring the game to our platforms. We'd prefer not to comment on the deals made by our partners with other platform holders, but we can confirm that the, the delay is not due to Xbox platform limitations that have been raised to us. I mean, that just Which continues to point seems towards to suggest the, yeah. the exclusivity thing. Yeah. But why wouldn't Sony say that? They say it right? about everything why else. Why wouldn't it, they say it? It's very odd, and like what? Maybe it's a timed exclusive, what, or it's not even worth they, mentioning. They but they announce that so. shit all the time too. I mean, yeah, yeah. You're right. like you're right. what? I, <laughs> it's happening. Well, so 
that was the big Call of Duty thing before right. Microsoft stepped in and bought them what because it was originally timed exclusive on Xbox, and then when Sony got it, it was like, play it fucking first on PlayStation, you pricks. Okay, Jesus, that was well, very what aggressive. What else came out that week? Was it something where, like, Sony was just hard on for something else? August 20th. Tell me, fuck Concord came out that way. <laughs> 20th. Games. Just listening to Dean type. This Sorry. Is top notch right, podcast. I got a right clicky ass keyboard, no, too. My bad. You really bro. do. It's very yeah. clicky. Uh, the keyboard effort all day. Or, uh, I'm just I'm just curious to see if like anything else came out that was big. I don't think there was anything though. Black I'm pretty sure Black Myth Wukong was the, the Concord came out the twenty third. So I don't know if maybe they were just pushing really hard on Concord and didn't push on Black Myth because of that. I, but in none of the advertising have they mentioned it's a t an That's exclusive for even a little bit. It just valid. seems very odd. I mean, you're completely valid. I Something fishy's going on here. And we're going to get to the and bottom what, of what's it. What's frustrating is somebody shit. else does, yeah. and we report what's, on their reporting. Because we're not investigating That's what reporters. I was going to say. <laughs> what's so fucking frustrating about it is that all of this is fucking conjecture by... People who don't know any more than we do. I know like, plenty. Yeah, they maybe talk to somebody, but <laughs> but the only person who like really knows are the people who know, and they're not fucking talking for some reason, and that's very strange. Yeah, everything about this is weird. It's like taxes. You owe money to us. How much? I don't know. You got to figure that out. No, no. I know, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. It's it's well, not. What if I, I don't do, know. What? You figure it out. It's I know, but I'm not going to tell you. You have to figure it out. And if you're wrong, you go to jail. Oh, okay, there there was a bunch right. of like shit that came out around that time that was probably arguably bigger. The Madden came out four days before that. Dustborn came out the twentieth. Uh, Concord was three days later. So there there was a bunch of shit that was definitely, I would say, as equally important if not more, because uh, Dustborn was getting pushed super hard, and so was, so was Concord. Um, but hey, I don't fucking know. I could be full of shit. Don't listen to me, guys. <laughs> well, moving on. Wait, wait interesting... to have the strength of your convictions, Steve. <laughs> Kotaku reports the first Minecraft movie trailer is here, and it looks super weird. I couldn't agree more, Kotaku. It looks super I... weird. I am gonna say all right. So I am gonna say this, Matt, and I thought this critical. earlier. I thought about this earlier um, before I took the edible that I took a little bit ago. So yeah, this, this is not the edible talking. Okay. All right. Um, this is the first time in my life okay. that I would not have sex with Jason Momoa. Yeah, he looks like shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like. They have managed to take that away from us. <laughs> and I'm very, very upset about it. This looks so fucking bad. I, I, I will say I will say a few things. This the trailer dropped, and I immediately brought John over to my computer, and we watched it together for the first time. Did he have fun? And when they He was thrilled. Good. He's so excited. Good. Because he's the target for audience him. for him. I was this gonna movie. say it's for him. <laughs> It's a hundred percent for him, and I remember when it started. And I'm looking at the trailer right now. When it first goes into the Minecraft world, I was like, "That looks fucking cool." the The world itself, I think, looks really, really neat. I think they did a crazy cool job of taking these low resolution polygonal characters and kind of live action them. them. Yeah, it's weird. Like the 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 sheep. Has like the realistic wool, but it's still like squared Long off. Like sheet. it's such a bizarre yeah. look. I'm so totally into it. I I love that weird personality. Now John's immediate reaction was, "Why is the portal blue? The portal's supposed to be purple. purple why is it blue?" Right. And because it's making Ender Dragon noises or Ender Portal noise or something. I don't know. Well, it Katie looks tried like explaining an, it, it to me it, earlier. Apparently, the lore. and this is 
this is what I've heard is that the blue portal has something to do with Minecraft Legends, which John has not played. Ah. Um, so there's, there is apparently some sort of lore connection to it. I don't know. My initial Fucking thought was lore. like, well, they're not coming from the end. They're coming from the real world. So maybe the blue portal, the portal. is what connects Minecraft world mm. to the real world. Like, it's definitely not mm. a portal to the end because they're coming from that portal. And I sincerely doubt they're coming from the end because this is their first time seeing the Minecraft world. So regardless, right. he thought that was weird. Um, then we both laughed at the uh, the sheep. There's this strange bit where you see like hoglins and ghasts flying around in the, in the daylight. Yeah. yeah, that was weird. And that's a little odd. I don't know. Maybe we'll get some kind of explanation for that. Because again, I don't know all the Minecraft lore, but you damn better believe John does. But like, I'm looking at the look of this, and I think it's really neat looking. I, I've seen a lot of folks online complaining about it, saying it looks like it was run through an AI program, and I'm just not seeing that. Like, I'm seeing the problems with the writing which seems terrible, and the costume design, which is just, like, I don't know, thrift store? I don't know what the hell is going on with the costume design. People, uh, and I'm like, I, I saw Jack people Black? being very critical about the, the, the graphical stuff, like, saying, I, I, they're moxels, they're not pixels! I was like, alright, everyone needs to fucking talk about I think that looks <laughs> neat. I think it's a really creative way of, of bringing this into live action. I think, like, I think this stuff looks super cool. It looks good. But, like, yes, Jason Momoa looks like absolute garbage. Jack Black as Steve is literally just Jack Black in a shirt. They didn't even give him a haircut. Like, no. Steve doesn't have a giant bushy beard and long hair. <laughs> it's a, there's not a lot you can yeah. tell in the detail of the character, but that's something that but you that, can. That's one of them. This is one just of the things. Jack Black in a blue shirt. And like, as Karen I love put, Jack Black. I do too. I don't think he's right for this role. No. But as Karen no. put it so perfectly, why would you cast the roundest man alive as a to play a blocky man. character? Yeah, there. <laughs> Maybe they're going to tell us, Chris. Jack is Black is hurtful. incredibly circular. It, he is. <laughs> but accurate. It's a bit of a circle. Yeah. <laughs> he is a spherical motherfucker, if he there ever is. was one. And, like, he wears it well. It's not, a, it's not an does. attack on I, him. He's great. He looks great. for like his, but He somehow, wears his body type well. But the point is blocking. He looks better than what Jason Momoa in this movie. <laughs> what is going on with Jason Momoa? His... I, I, is he wearing I, prosthetics? I, like, does he? I, what is going it's on? It's very <laughs> I'm so confused. It's, I, I hated everything about. It. I really did. I like. I hope this is great. I hope John loves it. I hope it is everything he could possibly want out of a Minecraft movie. This just screams Borderlands to me. Oh, and God. it's not going to be that obviously oh, it because the brand alone it, it is just gonna carry can't. It. Yeah, if but it's the as quality it's, of the picture, yeah. I it screams Borderlands to me. Not, I'm not even going to say the Super Mario Brothers movie. Not even like this isn't Sonic level. Like it's it's more towards the Borderlands end of the spectrum. It is you know it, it is smelling a little bit of the. Sonic, like, let's put real people in yeah. here, but at least they're going the other direction, right? Like, it's outside of the, the real movie's world. taking yeah. place not in our world, it's taking place in the crazy, weird ass Minecraft world. And as long yeah. as they get enough of that right, it's going to make kids happy. And that's really all that matters to me, right? Super Mario Bros. Is, is not yeah. an Oscar worthy movie, it's not a great movie, but I was entertained enough great. by it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think disagree it did with win you an both. Oscar for animation, actually. Yeah, I, I did, did it. It did. <laughs> I, th I thought it did. Oh. I could be way off, but I really, really hope it did because you just said it's not an Oscar winner, and I hope it won one. Let's see. Super really Mario happy. Brothers movie excluded from the Oscars. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> yes, it's official. I've Mario never, movie got I've no nominations at the Oscars. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've never sorry. been more disappointed. I've never been more disappointed in my entire life. I don't have much <laughs> that to would say have been so great. about the uh, Minecraft movie. I'm not a giant Minecraft fan. It looks like it's going to be fun, but I disagree with you both. I would definitely sleep with Ohio 9, uh, Jason Momoa. 
How dare you? Have you seen Game of Thrones? No. Which is probably That's why. That's Jason Momoa. Oh, really? Or Fuck. even, or right. even what, what, what about uh, Fast X? No, I actually or haven't Aqu- seen him in his Aquaman? best movies. I've only, uh, no, I haven't even seen Aquaman. <laughs> I don't, I haven't seen Jason Momoa in a lot of things outside of just interviews and him being really funny, which is like, I just want to be Jason Momoa's boyfriend, really. That's kind of... I'm, <laughs> I'd s- Right? Like, Not I'm, now. I'm, Not now. Yep. I'm like, yeah. Just that's that's it. I'm I'm really like I have a relationship in my head with Jason Momoa, and it didn't bother me that he looked like a complete trash bag here. I still would have slept with him. <laughs> he does. He looks like a human trash bag. Yeah. What's the? Uh, who are the kids? They look vaguely familiar. Oh, like so the, the the one chick is from uh, Orange Is the New Black. Well, no, I know okay. she's not the kid. Oh, <laughs> like kid kids? There were kids. I, yeah, maybe there's I didn't two look kids. I didn't she's care. a grown ass woman. She <laughs> was she, from she looks, Arms dude. of the New Black and Peacemaker. She's great. Look, I got no problems there. Black don't there's crack, two Chris. Children. She, could, she, could, she could be twenty. I don't know. Uh, fucking <laughs> Minecraft movie. Minecraft movie. Okay, so that it looks like the made zero sense. <laughs> Black don't crack. She could be twenty. She. The, she could be eighty. That's that was the f- uh, Jennifer Coolidge. Let's see this. Fir- the kid Sebastian <laughs> Eugene Hansen. Who, who's fucking this? Steiner mathing. I it was a joke earlier just for you, Dean. I wasn't intending you to use it later in the show. <laughs> I had to. All right, Emma Myers is playing Natalie. Why does she look familiar? Oh, she was the friend on Wednesday. Okay. So who's this kid who looks like Paul Rudd? That's freaking me out. Dude, he hasn't I'm on been in IMDb. Is Paul Rudd's kid? Is it Paul Rudd's kid? Because uh, I'm looking on IMDb, no. and like, there's this picture of him. The one that's credited... That just, uh, Hanson's last name, right? It's credited as Henry in the movie? I have no idea. I can't tell. I'm looking at the, this picture of Sebastian Eugene Hanson, yes, and that okay. doesn't look like the same kid. Oh, Maybe yeah, it does? He's only been in like two other movies, so I mean... Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's kind of a he's kind of an unknown quantity, because like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you this... In the SAG chat right, right here, like tell me this kid doesn't look. Uh, it's in the Facebook SAG chat. Like tell me this kid doesn't look like a young Paul Rudd in this picture. He does. That, that's, However, that, that, if you uh, if you look at Paul Rudd's actual kid, Paul Rudd looks younger than his son. It's <laughs> fucked up. So <laughs> Paul Rudd finally aged a little. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Yeah, uh, uh, this kid's been in a couple episodes of Mozart in the Jungle, Just Mercy, and... Oh, fuck, that's where I remember him from. Just Mercy? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, Mozart in the Jungle. Okay, yeah, he was in that for a couple episodes, and it's something called Lizzie's Story, which I don't I don't know what that is. But, yeah, uh, that's that's been it. Minecraft's his first big, big movie. Well, good for him. Well, moving on to our last story, uh, I don't know, Minecraft movie looks interesting. Uh, this one comes to us from Scion Storm, actually, it's linked us to Ars Technica. FBI, this isn't really strictly video game related, but he wanted us to talk about it. So, FBI busts musicians' elaborate AI-powered $10 million streaming royalty heist. This is fucking fascinating. Explain, this, please. Yeah, I saw so this. So, this dude, uh, he went, he created a bunch of original music... And then created a bunch of fake accounts uh, to listen to this music over and over again on Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music so that he could collect royalties. Mm. But that wasn't yeah. working. So he reached out to other like musicians to try to like make more of the music, and that didn't catch on. So he just said, fuck it. And he had AI create tons and tons of fake songs, get all them uploaded to Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon... And then create tons and tons of fake accounts to listen to the, all the songs over and over and over again. And the royalties he was getting from all this just completely fake content with fake people listening to it. He was earning um, like $1.2 million a year. I he kept this wow. up. He kept this up for um, seven years, I think. Wow. Saying. He was doing this for years. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for him. No, I'm not even mad. Like, he should be able to keep that. Because the only person he was stealing from was, like, Big Business, wasn't he? Who were paying him for ads? Uh, it says, The scheme was I lucrative. Mean... In a 2017 email to himself, 
Smith calculated that he could stream his songs 661,440 times daily, potentially earning $3,307.20 per day and up to $1.2 million annually. By June 2019, Smith was earning $110,000 a month, sharing a portion with his co-conspirators. The New York Times reported that in an email earlier this year, he boasted of reaching 4 billion streams and $12 million in royalties since 2019. That's incredible. Good. I, I'm fucking super happy that all of that happened. That's fucking awesome. Just way to... You wait, here, here's a way to use AI to steal from the man good job yeah like i don't he didn't hurt anyone i i still think he should be able to keep it i know like fucking the corpse are gonna boohoo about it but like i think it's funny right? well there was a whole lot of fraud involved i think is the problem I, look i mean can't um, we just look the other way this says, fraud? Time? while the ai generated element of this story is novel smith allegedly broke the law by setting up an elaborate fake listener scheme the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, Damian Williams, announced the charges, which include wire fraud and money laundering conspiracies. Oh, well, that's bad. All right, like, never yeah. mind. I mean, I still love this guy. <laughs> the, the AI but, like, part, I'm like, go for it, dude. Damn the man. But it was like all the money laundering stuff that came after it that's like, all right, well, you did break a bunch of laws. You did a bunch of crimes, so okay. I mean, you gotta <laughs> hide the money from the fake people, Chris. <laughs> With fake businesses. You see, it's, just, it's a big fucking web of fake things now. All right. Well, we've put this off as long as we can. We're going to take. That's going to wrap things up for week old news. We're going to take ourselves a quick break. And when we come back, we are heading to Donkey Kong Island or whatever they called it in this stupid fucking show. We're going to Canada to watch a CG <laughs> Donkey Kong Country show uh, for the Side Cartoon <laughs> Express. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from geekade.com. Stick around. Hey, I'm Ryan. And I'm Andy. Neither of us are David Crane, but we are the hosts of David Crane's Amazing Movie Time. That's our monthly Geekade Patreon exclusive podcast that covers movies that are cult classics, weird, or just sometimes laughably bad. We ourselves have at least two of those qualities, so I guess it makes sense to hear what we think of those movies in retrospect. You can hear all that and more by becoming a Geekade Patreon supporter. And as always, be kind, rewind. We are safe at home, the leading dog rescue in the heart of New Jersey. Are you searching for a loyal companion, a dog that will bring love and joy to your home? Look no further than Safe at Home. At Safe at Home, we believe in giving every dog a second chance. We rescue, rehabilitate, and find loving forever homes for dogs in need, right here in the Garden State. Our dogs are ready to make a lasting impact on your life. Each one has a unique story, a wagging tail, and an incredible capacity for love when you adopt from safe at home you're not just gaining a pet you're becoming a part of our family our dedicated team ensures a seamless adoption process providing ongoing support and guidance with new jersey's beautiful parks beaches and trails you and your new furry friend will have endless opportunities for adventures and cherished memories safe at home relies on the support of compassionate individuals like you your donations and volunteer work enable us to continue saving lives and finding forever homes for these amazing dogs. Join us in creating a safer, happier community for dogs in New Jersey. Together we can make a difference and give every dog the chance to feel safe at home. Visit our website or call us now to learn about how you can be a part of the Safe at Home mission. Safe at Home, because every dog deserves to be loved and protected www.safeathomerescue.org Hey there, Stone Age Gamer fans. Are you also fans of Star Trek? Well, maybe you'd like to listen to yet another podcast. Maybe yet another Star Trek podcast. You see, me and my friend Majid, every other week, we talk about the original series, we talk about Strange New Worlds, we talk about Star Trek. We have a third friend, Brad, who's sometimes here, but he hasn't been. I don't know why. So come on over and listen to our show, yet another Star Trek podcast at yetanotherstpod.com. 
or wherever you get your podcasts. everyone, Chris here. Podcast listening is free, but podcast creation is not. That's why the Geekade Patreon exists. In an effort to help us pay the bills, we've got a Patreon page set up where you can gain access to our monthly podcast topic schedule, get early access to many of our shows, and more. If you'd like to help support Geekade and keep these shows running week after week, head over to the Geekade Patreon page, linked in the show notes of this very podcast. Hey guys, we're back. We did it. We returned. Let's talk all aboard the Cartoon Express, everybody. We're talking about Donkey Kong Country Season 2, Episode 5, Message in a Bottle Show. And oh my god, this might be this might actually be the worst show we've watched so far. This oh, is the pinnacle of be. shit. This is absolutely this is beyond a shadow of a doubt. It can't get any worse. <laughs> and like, I honestly think you're right, even for this show. I, I don't think it will. I don't think this show gets worse than this because. Yeah, you right. picked the worst goddamn episode, dude. Oh my I god! I didn't pick it. It Who was fucking it? random. Oh, it's random. No, dude. Fuck the universe. Fuck. Like dude, I, the minute the minute it started, and I realized. Oh, um. Go ahead and maybe like explain it. But the minute I realized what this episode was, I immediately started cursing you out loud. Like fuck you, Chris. <laughs> fuck you. It's really. It's a clip really? show. It's oh my season God. two, episode five, and it's a clip show. So we're watching a clip show for a show we've never seen before, and it's fucking atrocious. It. So. I have I, I a bunch said it of in the Discord. I have a bunch of notes. I said it in the Discord, but this segment was my idea, and then we massaged it into what it is now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't deserve your love. <laughs> if you watch this, if you didn't watch it, fuck off. I'm not talking to you. But if you watched this fucking cartoon, this was, I, I almost, when Funky Kong starts talking and he talks for, I, this is like a 19 minute show and Funky Kong, I think talked for like six minutes. It was this long, rambling... Oh, my God. <laughs> horribly offensive, um, racist accent, at, at least according to everyone in my house, because they came by and they were like, why is he fucking talking like that? Um, that went on it's for like Jamaican fucking six stereotype. minutes. I almost had... I almost fucking had a panic attack watching it. Like, I started seeing into the void and shit. <laughs> like, what is happening? I thought, oh, Jesus... Oh, my God. It, this is the worst thing we've ever done to people, Chris. This is one of the worst things. Look, we didn't do this, okay? This show existed. This was season two. This show aired, and someone said, give us more of this, please. And then they I, did. Why do they have teeth sometimes? And other times not have teeth. I don't know, dude. Also, like, can we talk about the fact that their brow muscle is, like, it has <laughs> fur now, but, like, in in the eye or behind? I don't know. Their anatomy is weird. Yeah. Like, I, I was trying to make a fucking sense of their face, and I couldn't for any of them. And then, like, I started looking at Donkey Kong on cover <clears throat> art. And comparing it to what was on the screen, because I was like, it it looks like if a skinwalker pretended to be Donkey Kong. <laughs> like, that's that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. It, also, like, bam. I I didn't know it was a flashback episode. Like I thought I thought just the Yeti part was like one thing, and I was like, okay, it's over. And then he announces another person. I was like, oh, God, oh, no. No, please, no. And he did it again. I was like, oh, holy shit. This is 20 minutes. This is 20 minutes of this bullshit. And well, I, I remember seeing the title of the episode and being like, message in a bottle show? Are they doing a bottle show? Really? Because that's like a... 
that's a term for a, a, a flashback, a clip Is show, it? basically. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, they did a literal message in a bottle show. They made a message in a bottle lead them to a bottle show. And it's like... I hated it. Okay, that's vaguely clever, but I hate you. Now, okay, I remember when this originally observation... Aired. I don't Sorry, remember it being that bad, though. I remember, I remember being pretty bad, right? I didn't see this episode. I saw part of one episode, and I noped the fuck out. I was obsessed with Donkey Kong Country. And when I found out there was a cartoon, I was like, all right, how bad could it be? And then I watched like five minutes and said, okay, it's that bad. This is, this is how bad it can be. I'm going to go ahead and pretend this doesn't exist and move on with my life. Um, this show came after Reboot Beast and Wars. And it looks worse. And it, it looks, looks so much worse. worse than any other oh CG God. show I've ever seen. Yes, 100%. This looks worse than Voltron, the third dimension. This looks worse <laughs> than everything. This is one of the ugliest cartoons I've ever seen in my fucking life. It is such an atrocity. And, like, what is what did they do to Dixie Kong? Oh, my what God. What the hell know. was that? I don't know. What? Why is... T- Tiff's I wrote, observation. I wrote, why is Funky what? Jamaican? I wrote, why is Eddie's tongue blue? Uh, <laughs> where is... Uh, like, what happened... K Roll's cape is a fucking napkin? What's going on with K Roll's cape? It stops <laughs> at his tail. shoulders. And then he's got no tail. I so I know that <laughs> Famously he's, he's tailed a, King K Rule. He's a chubby boy to begin with, but like they, they made him look pregnant. <clears throat> like I don't I don't know what it was, but he, he just he looked straight up like he, he was about to have like eight or nine gators, which is fine. Like maybe male gators do that. That's cool, but like they he, don't. Just, he was very off-putting, and <laughs> also, I don't know if you guys about. noticed, every time his cheek went up a little too high, his eyes started to bulge out of his head, which I know is characteristic of the character that his eyes supposed to bulge at times, but it was like every few seconds it was starting to bulge, and I was like, I don't, I don't think that's how that's supposed to work. Also, he should probably get that looked at. That's not healthy. That's about to come out. <laughs> So, Tiff's observation was about um, th- Dixie. What's it? Not Dixie. Dixie Kong? Yeah. Dixie Candy Kong, Kong or Dixie Kong? Kong. Candy, Dixie Kong's Candy the Kong. younger one. Sorry. Candy's the girlfriend yeah, Candy that's Kong. been turned into... Yeah. I don't know what that is T- either. <laughs> Tiff's, Tiff's observation, um, she was like, all right, look, when you put one character in clothes... It makes the rest of the characters naked. And that's fucking weird. I said, okay. And then Katie's observation, like a minute or two after that, Katie comes walking into the room and she goes, is that supposed to be a crocodile? I'm like, yeah, it's a crocodile, gator, whatever. She was like, why does it have nipples? Why did yeah, you put nipples talk. on one of the alligators and not nipples not on, the on the fucking monkeys who have fucking nipples? <laughs> Kids right, kids right. Man. Like yeah, you, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. It. Oh god, no, uh, no. Dude, so I mean, <laughs> no. Candy Kong's no. whole flashback <laughs> is fucking awkward as shit. Oh my god, all the the, the sax music. The, yeah, the, oh, the last god. thing in the universe I want to think about is sexual tension between yep. these abominations. <laughs> And the worst part was like the the sax music was louder than the vocals. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is like they're about to like fuck or something. This is weird. It's like a bad porno. <laughs> it's terrible. It's like fucking Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh god, <laughs> the porn. Why is Mark Wahlberg trying to fuck that monkey? That's what that movie. That's the subtitle of Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. If you've never seen it. <coughs> Oh, also, did anyone else notice that their feet often don't actually touch the ground? Holy That's kind of weird. The, the walk animations are fucking terrible. Oh my god, they all—they <laughs> walk like they're from Five Nights at Freddy's. Man, it's bad. Well, all like, the voice so, acting is trash. Correct me. All the trash, voice acting yeah. was terrible. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Correct me if I'm wrong. This, this show, like how it appears that it was made, uh, <laughs> cheaply is the first way that it appears. 
but cheaply to the point where they made one skeleton model to use for, or, or well, two because of the little characters, I guess. But there was like one basic skeletal model for them to paste these CG oh, the skins suits. over yeah. and make yeah. it animate. So that's like, I think that's part of why it was so weird because they're not in like K rule has the same animation skeleton as candy Kong, like inside of it, you know? So that might, what you were just saying, being with like the bulging of the eye and shit, like that's how cheaply this was made, or at least that's how it appeared to me. I don't know if I'm correct in that, but I I think I might be. You're you're right. I mean, because even in this episode, I noticed that for the clip part of it, it's the same like three or four episodes with just different scenes from the same episodes clipped out and like pasted in for that character scene in that episode. And it's it's literally yeah. just like three or four episodes put together, which was I wonder because there's an entire show. Well, no, yeah, I wonder if because this was season five of or uh, episode five of season two, I wonder if the clips were from oh, season one, two, two three maybe. and four. Yeah, I guess you're right. It could have been. Like, they just clipped the first four shows together. Okay, I'm not going to go what? back and find I, out. I don't I, care that much. No, I mean, they <laughs> like, probably yeah, will eventually. I, nope. If we keep uh, somebody will tell show me. long enough, it's, no, this is going to come up again. The next, the next fucking time it lands on Donkey Kong Country, yeah, we're not, you we're not are going it. to keep talking and pretend like it didn't even happen. <laughs> You're like, oh, something happened with my mouse there. Hold on a second. <laughs> like, don't you fucking dare. Don't you dare. Cause, uh, I know it, Evan's got his, his counter going on, but I already have cancer, Chris. What the fuck else? Don't, yeah, don't make it any worse. And, like, Dan's right. It's all bad. I was kind of badly making my way to this specific episode, so I went through three other episodes. Didn't watch all of them, just watched pieces <laughs> and like it, one was worse than the last like there's no redeeming traits to this show it's just all fucking bad like the jokes okay. are bad the, go ahead. i have a hard disagree on that there are no redeeming qualities <laughs> go ahead uh, there is one singular redeeming quality here okay one unavoidable singular <laughs> redeeming quality there's this i took a screenshot of it where can i send it where you guys are both gonna see it uh, Here. I mean, I'm gonna text it to you, Dean, and I'll throw okay. it in the SAG chat. Oh no, I mean, I have the SAG chat up. I well, think. while you are, while they're doing this weird, this is your life, Donkey Kong thing. There's a picture of Donkey Kong in the background that is the most wonderful, perfect image I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this weird. Dead yeah. eyed stare oh, Donkey God. Kong and the, the thing in the circle in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I was cracking up hysterically every time I saw this weird Simpsons face. I don't know what I was just going to say. It, very it looks like somebody tried to do a Simpsons version of Donkey <laughs> Kong and went, Nope, that's not it. I, I see what you're going for. It's close, but it's like, not quite it. up to Simpsons Just quality. plaster it on the wall. This is what, I don't know what this picture is, but it's and amazing. The <laughs> it looks like it's on the cup as well. It is. Like, cause it's so cool. At Donkey Kong's going away party, there's branded DK <laughs> merch. I love it so much. Every time. So I watched this with John, and he's just looking at this like, wow, this is pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah. And I, the whole time, every time that picture showed up on screen, I am just cracking up hysterically. Like I need to have this. I want this a poster. I just want this big circle of that on my wall. This completely <laughs> derpy Kong picture. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty so fucking wonderful. great. And who was this weird business Donkey Kong? Like, thank you. With the thin. Yeah, Gomez mustache. had a mustache. Like, I don't what know. Is, what, I don't what know, is that thing? Why, why'd, he get a, why'd he get a flashback? <laughs> like, I don't, fucking I don't stupid, know. Man. I think he's he's Penn horrid. Came in, he owns came a barrel factory, apparently. And asked why there was a fucking Nazi Donkey Kong. 
<laughs> oh, that's just Hitler Kong. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's fine. <laughs> he didn't make the final cut of the games, but like if you go back and you know speak with the developers, they'll tell you that they thought a good idea for our kids' game was Hitler Kong. Das Führer Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hated this so fucking <laughs> yeah, much. This was really hard think, to get through. It was, it was I, bad. I, shit. <laughs> don't think I've ever seen anything this bad. And that that's why I told everyone in the, the SAG podcast uh, chat on Discord, which you all should join, uh, that they needed to watch it with us. Because I, w- I wasn't going to be the only person who was going to be mentally and emotionally assaulted here. Like, now... No, if if we were going to do this for the people, the people were going to have to watch it with us, too. Again, <laughs> I, I can do nothing but apologize for making... <laughs> for, for providing the spark of the idea that led us down this particular fucking path. <clears throat> I know... Um- I know earlier in the show, <laughs> when I was talking about Concord, I said, like, you know, I just, like, people were obviously putting their heart and soul, and it sucks that they're not being rewarded for this kind of shit. No, this but is then different. you watch, like, this Donkey Kong cartoon, and you're like, you fuckers weren't even trying. And they made this it for two seasons. What's wrong with you? <sighs> and you got 30-something episodes of this fucking show? The Kremlings oh. themselves, like Clump and Crusha, they looked pretty close to their video game counterpart CG models. I know, but he had nipples. Not K- very really. noticeably, I mean, they were dark. They were oh, well, Clump, a dark nipple on a that light was background. In, that, that was in the game too. I know, but he's the only one on the show that has it. It's very distracting. It is very distracting. It has always been very distracting and very strange. Like. Why is that a thing? But, uh, I mean, th- here, th- 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 in case you've never actually seen the original character art for Clump in Donkey Kong Country for Super no, no. Nintendo, I, take I old bitties. I don't know what's going on there. I, it's weird. It's a weird thing. It's But it, it's weird <laughs> that, do you think like they had a conversation about it? Do you think that like the animators were sitting down and, hey, hey, Jim! Jim, you're working on the Donkey Kong show, right? Oh yeah, yeah I am. Yeah, did you notice? Uh, did you notice only one of the characters got nipples? Just one, <laughs> and it's not a monkey. No, no, it's a Gator. Yeah, why? It's weird. Why is this one got tits? What's going on there? <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. That's why it's drawn. Just, just, I, just do it that way. Should I? Should I? Should I put him <laughs> on the rest of the characters? No, nope, no, just him. don't do that. <laughs> Noticeably add nipples to one character. Yeah, just take all the nipples Consciously. and put them to one character. Consciously add nipples to only one fucking character. <coughs> I don't know why I can't get over it. It's just, I know, I get the uh, source material. Fuck off. Source material Donkey Kong has teeth, and he does it in more than half of this fucking runtime. <laughs> None of them do. None of them have fucking teeth. Damn, why are you fucking arguing about source material on this? There is no Except source for material the fucking here. Three seconds where they have teeth. There is no it's source so material. Fucked up. Yes, there I is. Know, I don't know how they, they didn't use it. I don't know how they got the faces so wrong. Like. The, clearly, just, they had access to the source worse. material, right? They had access to the source material because you look at Clump and Crusha, they're basically the models from the first game. But then you look at everything else, like, half the time Donkey Kong stands like Donkey Kong, and then other time he's just standing up like a dude. Bro, it's weird. It's fucking But all of his proportions are off because he's an ape. It's like, what's going on? What am I looking he's at? Not, he's not... Really he is not a tall. dude. Not, none of this makes sense. None of this works. Dude, just, Why was wh- the Yeti stupid? <laughs> I don't know. Why did you make the Yeti dumb? Eddie the Yeti. Justice. For That's Eddie the worst the part. Yeti. That's the worst fucking part is that his flashback makes no goddamn sense because he's just blathering on like someone who has fucking like 
the worst brain trauma I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Like, nothing he says makes sense. The flashback doesn't <sighs> make sense. And then he's just like, I done now. Thanks, Mr. Monkey. And <laughs> yeah, like, walks us the off fuck? the stage. <laughs> <laughs> that was such an accurate impression of what happened in that fucking show. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, I'm so fucking angry. I'm so, I'm so deliriously angry about everything I watched. It was like, uh, it was like one of those, uh, fucking, uh, oh god, the uh, the Scooby Doo chase scenes. It's literally the Yeti going from one side of the screen <laughs> to the other, and then Donkey Kong and Diddy fall. Like it's it's two or three minutes of that, and that's how it starts. It starts oh. off on a high note. It gets worse from there. <laughs> And, like, every motherfucker <laughs> that got up to speak, every fucking giant ape that got up to talk, and fucking Gator when King K. Rule comes in. I did like how they were saying it, though, like, Karul, like, King get Karul. it. King Karul. King Karul, like, C-R-U-E-L, not the way we fucking spelled it. So every giant motherfucker is sitting in their treehouse or wherever it is, and when Diddy Kong first goes up to the stage... He lowers the microphone, right? Because the microphone yeah. is too tall. He lowers the microphone, and then he talks, and then they do the same joke over and over again. Every ape, that the full-grown <laughs> ape that then comes up, fucking squats. Not one of them thought to lift the microphone that they just watched be lowered? <laughs> fucking kidding me? It wasn't a funny joke. Certainly not for the rest of the show. Dude, I'm convinced someone didn't know how to use, like, the hand anchor, and, like, they were just like, fuck it, we're gonna animate around it, I guess. Oh, shit. Steve, you know how to do the hand anchor? No, I don't fucking know. All right. It's the microphone staying down, then. Just make them bend down. Should I, should I put nipples on the microphone? No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Really, just on the one. Not even. It's absolutely worth every All second. Right. Every second of torture Fuck. is worth it for this. You know, those are Donkey Kong's eyes, Chris, on that porch in the background. This is two nipples. It's. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. That's the like that. <laughs> after I had the fucking panic attack from listening to Funky Kong, <laughs> fucking like, well titted alligator come fucking strolling into my life. Just uh, the exact time I needed it. Oh man, it might have been the version I was fucking watching, but Funky Kong definitely looked the most naked out of all of them. Like he was a nude <laughs> really fur. Did. Oh man. <laughs> Like I kept staring, and I was like, "Bro, how do you? How's your dick not hanging out? Like you just, you're not wearing anything. There's no fur on you. What you kidding? When you put clothes on one character, <laughs> it's, it's a the other one they all is wearing it. a fucking necktie. That's it. And the thing He's is, he's very clear, so he knows what clothes are. But he just chooses not to wear just the necktie. Fucking yellow bandana. He's not even fucking only. shirt cocking it. He's just. Oh, Cranky man. Kong has a sweater vest on because he's old, I guess. Like, so his balls are fine. <laughs> he likes the breeze, man. Fuck. <laughs> fucking Cranky Kong's <laughs> fuck. Just cold old man balls, just fucking dangling in the wind. They're not dangling, man. You know he's dragging those motherfuckers. <laughs> the dirt. No, he wasn't. I watched the show. They weren't oh, there. My bad, but my they bad. should have been. My mind was telling me. <laughs> two, two footprints in a ball sack track. I'm fucking uh, broken. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I take it back. We should watch. <laughs> we should watch oh my God. God. We killed Chris. God damn it. I'm sorry. 
I loved you. Holy shit. This is the end. All right. I've loved you very much. Oh, my God. <sighs> you all right? You going to make it? You going to pull no, through? No, I'm really not. <laughs> <coughs> oh, my God. That was the funniest shit. Well, I don't know what else <laughs> That's to say it. about this no. flaming dumpster fire of a show. Uh, um, oh, what's what's next? All right, here here it comes. What oh, is fuck you? What is the next stop on the SAG Cartoon Express? What are we gonna do? Donkey Kong Country season two episode seven. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? Yes, that's what oh just came God. up. <laughs> no, 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 nope. I will quit the show. I will take my Steam Deck, say thank you all very fucking much, and that will be it. <laughs> no, uh, I just I, I, I just clicked it a handful more times uh, just to see where it would land, and it landed on Video Power Season 1, Episode 23. Okay. I can do that. Yes, you can. We all can. It's it's the super short. It's fifteen minutes. Um, this is this this is the show that was like all the weird acclaim characters. I think. Yeah, like Mister Big from Narc and Kuros from Wizard of Warriors, <laughs> because, and <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> it's a game about fucking throwing hypodermic needles at people. Is I, I, I fucking love Narc, but what the fuck is that about? That game is insane. Completely, ban completely bananas. Well, there you go, folks. Video Power Season One, Episode Twenty Three. Um, uh, oh, what's the what's the name of this episode? Right, because I think they all had episode titles. Because I went through and manually did all these Power Team things. Um, right, right. Sorry. So it's it's not. So Video Power was a part. It was the actual name of the show, but vi uh, the Power Team was a segment in this over or like this other video power show that was about video games. So we're actually just watching right. the cartoon, the power team uh, episodes. Episode 23 was ski patrol. There it is. Ooh. Ooh. Sounds good. Ski patrol. I mean... <sighs> you know why that's exciting? Because one of the characters in this show is the monster truck. Bigfoot. Are they going to put skis yeah, that's on awesome. a monster truck? Oh, I hope because so. I'm into that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking great I'm so that's in that's wonderful alright well that's gonna do it for us that is our show oh boy alright I can catch my breath <laughs> it's too much I'm spent uh, join us next week for uh, the Alphabet Super Series oh no sorry join us next week for an interview All right, we're gonna do an interview I was gonna do an interview with Ollie but he's on vacation so I'm gonna try to find somebody else uh, or we'll just find something else dumb to talk about. We don't really have a solid plan. <laughs> we're, 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 I was going to do an interview. We're, we're going to interview Ollie later in the year when he gets back from vacation. Uh, so we still I'll have another find week. find somebody else. I'll find somebody else. We're going to interview Dean. <laughs> yeah, man. Great. I love it. Fucking, it's going to be great. Been doing plenty. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you guys want to talk about depression? <laughs> Then we're going to interview Donkey Kong. Oh, Jesus. We're going to we're going to find the uh, the actors that were involved in Donkey Kong Country and interview them. And berate oh, them for I, I do have questions. <laughs> I do have. Questions. We're going to find the animators and we're going to ask them about the nipples. <laughs> I need answers. Oh god. I don't think I can handle that. Why does this lizard like have heaving man breasts? What's going on? Give him the melons. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. Uh, we're on most social media platforms. If you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. <sighs> all it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful... I just can't stop laughing. More useful <laughs> links than you can shake a joystick at. If you'd like to get early... He's wearing a necktie. He's got clothes. He knows what clothes are. <laughs> If you'd like to get early access to the show's episodes, <laughs> as well as a bevy other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network, check out our page. <laughs> I can't fucking take it anymore. <laughs> uh, also, like, do the show notes, it helps Geek. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> all right, I'm back. It helps keep the show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Gaiali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, <coughs> we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making this show listenable for all you folks. <coughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I cannot stop coughing. <laughs> We'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with this. <laughs> On behalf of Dan, Dean, and Donkey Kong's tie, <laughs> keep playing games. This <laughs> <laughs> is <just> crazy. <laughs> Cricket <laughs> drag his nuts. <laughs> Fucking diet. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, sorry.